Yo, is this? Stone is back. Stone is back. Ah, Stone is back. Nobody knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Welcome back to the Stoney's Bud Show. This is the Boarding House Podcast Studio in Utah coming out to you. And uh, very, very special episode today. I am very glad to be here with you today. And uh, you guys hear that off in the background? Huh? That sounds like a telephone ringing. That's crazy, man. I haven't even tell. This thing's not even, that's crazy, man. That is nuts. Hello? Well, yes, sir. Of course. Yes. I will right now. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> the massive masses have spoken. It's time for the Mark Frank podcast. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, Mark Frank Montoya Been trying to get him in the studio for a long time At the other podcast He uh, was just too busy Things were going on I think honestly he was waiting for numbers to get to a certain size That's why it's pretty insane that he's he's coming on To me, well, um, you know, in my infancy here Episode 8 or 9 or whatever this is maybe seven, I think it's 8, episode 8 um, And so, you know, he drove in first to sit and talk with me and uh, he didn't want to put out an episode that was six hours long, that was too much for everybody to listen to. But yet, he had a lot that, that he wants to pass on to you guys. He has a lot he wants to say. And uh, so I think uh, we, we decided, hey, let's meet up. We'll just record a little bit, talk some shit. I started gathering guest questions. I called up good friend of Mark's, myself, of, of snowboarding, Tina Bassett, to get a question from her. And she's like, oh, I, I land in Salt Lake City that morning. I'll just, I'll be at your house. So, bam, I decided to sit down with Tina and Mark Frank, two complete legends, two people that are, are so special to me, so special in my heart, and uh, so important to snowboarding. I mean, Tina basically paved the way for, for females to, to do what they do now. I mean, without Tina, who knows if they'd be up there. She was, she was like elbowing guys at the top of the jump to, to give females a chance to, to hit it. Her and, and Shannon Dundowning were like up there basically pushing the guys aside or else ask begging for permission to hit a jump at a big air. And, uh, and then you got Mark. He's pretty much the first snowboarder to come out of the inner city life and uh, what, what could have been a crazy, crazy future turned into him meeting the snowboard community and, and turning into what it was and, and now what he's gone on to. And, and Mark wants to sit down and uh, kind of, you know, tell his story from from his perspective. And, and also, I have a, tons of guest questions. It's crazy, like 20 or 30. And so we're going to break this up. And uh, what we have today is kind of just the intro. Um, I sat down with Tina and Mark, and we just talked about, you know, how, how Tina used to take care of us all in Salt Lake and, and uh, how just how things were back then when we first moved here. And Mark cracks into a little bit about talking about his... Uh, early days of of snowboarding and how we got into it but this is really just a pre pre episode to the mfm episodes that are going to be coming because uh not only is mark going to break up his story into you know at the most two hours you know an episode but maybe an hour and a half even but we're going to get into his story and then at the end of each episode we're going to at least take a half hour and talk about what he's doing now and how maybe that can help us in our lives um, whether it's snowboarding better or making some cash money, so uh, or just being happy in life and 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 maybe you know just just trying to stay focused on the good things. Mark has has learned so much and he has so much to pass on that uh, what an, what an opportunity we're gonna have to be able to sit down with him and listen to him and then to have Tina Bassett in the studio with him. It's like woo! I must have uh, I must have really lucked out to uh, make this happen, but you know what? The masses have spoken. It's time. Let's get into it. MFM, Tina Bassich, Stony Buds. This is the preliminaries. Let's go.
or just ripping snowbird or something like that. It's like you're screaming, you're all stoked, but Alaska's like you 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 have to be all serious. Like you have to be on point and so serious on like no aware of you know what's gonna break. Who's is everybody gonna everybody gonna be prepared? That's like a serious like that's serious. Uh, it was never a job, but like that's when I was like it's okay, a whole other level because because they they almost kind of kicked. Justin told me something where, like, when I first showed up, I was like, I was like over amped, I think, and, and and I was talking in this crazy, I was in character, I was going, y'all, like all, all crazy. <laughs> I was that, still laugh. That. that laugh, that laugh. Oh, dude, no, nah, dude, I was, oh, dude, no, nah, we're, are you ready, bro? No, nah, dude, like, oh, dude, and I wouldn't stop because I was, I think I was kind of. And they and the, the the they were like so serious on the, and the pilot and every, the the guides were like, is this guy? Is he gonna be okay? I don't know if we should let him on the thing. Like I didn't know that until later because they were like, I don't know if we're gonna let him on the on the thing tomorrow. Like on the on the heli. I never he knew any of this focus. until it was over. Justin had to go. No, no, he's just playing around. He's was, in character. Was that when we had the things in our nose? The f- yeah, it was. Dude, yeah, I, think I was with you. I was like, no, dude. There's a. Th- he had the, uh, the. You don't put the, the freaking microphone in your nose because the next person is gonna. You know, it's just rude. And I was like, dude. Oh, dude. Like, like, <laughs> dude we gotta find the photo because it's incredible. Marco's like making the funniest face. I have that photo, man. Nose. Oh I didn't know gosh. they were going to kick oh, you off the, off the boat or whatever, dude. Like, send you home. They didn't know Marco. Well, see, I got on. Oh, and then I'm money, doing though. that thing. Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> they're like no. You're no, cut. <laughs> no, they, they take your money, though. They were just fine the next morning. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's got his cash. All right. So how do you get ready? How do you prepare to to get... Or how do you get better? How do you even know you get, you get released into the situation where it's life or death? You're snowboarding, which you're comfortable with. But, man, all of a sudden, it's on this new amplified level. How do you prepare for that? And how do you, uh, I mean, it's like Moss Spaghetti moment. Once again, Eminem, it's like, except life or death. So you got to step up. You got to actually make your money worth it because you're spending, what, 10000 easy on the trip. You got to uh, yeah. get your video part. You got to stoke Justin out. I mean, you got to waste, you don't want to waste time, but you also want to be safe. How do you do it? What's the, how do you prepare? Like, what's well, that? I, I, I wasn't prepared, but I, I, I quickly found out the, you know, the, the, it was necessary to get serious, like, because everybody, everybody, it's more intense. The whole energy about it is way more intense. And yeah, you're spending a lot of money. It reminds, reminds, reminds me of a, a new snowmobile. Like, you just don't want to mess it up. It's not <laughs> like you're trying to save your own life. You're scared that the snowmobile is going to get messed up because it costs 12 grand. Or yeah. Right. And the windshield's going to break off and first. So you run. don't want to blow the, the money. And, yeah, but, and then everybody's like, Dead ass serious. No, you need to know your peeps, your shovel. You got your probe. Let this, uh, you know, how, how how fast can you find somebody? And we're doing these drills. If if in case something happens, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. So we're gonna get an avalanche probably. And I was thinking, okay, you know. And for you too, like, you didn't come from a ski family that was on the mm. mountain. Like mm-hmm. you didn't come from yeah. snow awareness. You were so coming from skateboarding. Out. Yeah. So that's pretty far fetched. Did that <laughs> freak you out, or do you think you were just I was, Not aware enough, off, I was just, just trying to act like, no, I know. Okay, I, I know. And I was like, I didn't know shit. This peeps, I've been using this thing for years. Over yeah. <laughs> How do you turn it on? <laughs> Does it take batteries? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beep, beep. It's basically going to fuck around and find out out there is what happens because it's like. I think we've all, anybody who's been to Alaska has tumbled head over heels down a mountain before. Like, I've been up there and I remember Justin saying like, Make sure you go fast at the bottom because there's a crevasse you have to jump over. And I was like, no. oh, dang. And then third turn in, I hit a chunk of ice and start cartwheeling. I'm like, here I go. Where's into the, the crevasse. crevasse. Where's Stopped the crevasse? right before it and then had to hike up and get over it. Dude, I mean, so, you were going up there. You were probably like alone as a the, the woman. I, I was. I it, You know, a lot of that, um, a lot of those crews back there, back then, um, there was usually maybe one girl on the crew, and I really, I think Justin Hosnick is such an awesome, yeah, props to him. Like, he really accepted me into his crew for valuing what I could bring to the camera, not just giving me a chance to see if I could huck something big yeah. enough to get a shot. Like, he really was into 
trying to get the shots together. And, you know, we, that's how we got to make a living snowboarding, you know? So, um, I know Justin, I remember being in the Brighton parking lot and Justin's like, there's this new guy coming out of Denver. <laughs> you got to meet him. He's coming out here. He's going to film with us. And I was like, okay. And he's like, his name's Marco. And, um, you walked up to me and you go, like, I was about to say, hi, my name's Tina. And you're like, Yo, you Tina Bassett? <laughs> <laughs> I heard about you. <laughs> I know and you so it, we went up that day. We we <coughs> hiked um, the bowl at Brighton. And every trick that I did, like every cliff jump, wow. you, I, I don't know if you'd ever snowboarded with a girl before <laughs> that, but everything no, I did. Not. I don't think so. He thought it was the coolest thing. Everything I did, was that, I don't even know if you were mocking me or what, but you were like, was that a method grab girl? <laughs> like, <laughs> damn, girl. Like, I'd jump and, like, huck myself off a cliff and get a grab, and you'd be like, damn. <laughs> like, no. all hyped for me. Like, you're I cool think our energy shit. just yeah. clicked like right a away. Peel so skit, right? Quick. We clicked <laughs> so, so fast. Yeah. Because you're, you're just, you know, I've, and then later I realized how cool you really are. Because you got to be pretty damn cool to, like, chill. To be hanging around, you know, to to be you probably, you know, when dudes get it, there's just a crew of dudes and be the only girl, you got to be pretty freaking dope. Like, because I've been around other, you know, girls that just act crazy and weird around, you know, they're like high maintenance or whatever. Does that, does that sound weird? No, I no. mean, I, I don't know. I but know like, what you're trying to say. <laughs> like, 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 I, I, I you know, we were on uh, so many trips. She, I don't gets, want to name she trip. gets out there, and but gets she doesn't the do that. And, She's like chill yeah, and, ner- and like, you know, just solid, like genuine and always, you. you know, nurturing and everything, everything. Just I, I loved my part of the crew. Like I felt um, like I just embraced all of you guys and just lifted us all up and just yep. felt like. You know, dinner's at my house. Dude, Thanksgiving's at my house. It was like, so nice, too. We, I yeah. just felt part of it in a real way, and we all just cared for each other so much. So it was just such a, a cool vibe. I feel fortunate um, because when I look back on my career, you know, a lot of girls had resistance, and I had some acceptance there that other girls weren't getting. So I felt like... I had met my people, like, like and I stuck with from it. The, from like, the guys, like, from the crews? or Just just be trying to be in video parts yeah. and trying, you know, like, all that stuff. Like, I felt very fortunate. I did have barriers to break through and had to prove my point. But, you know, you guys, we were just all friends. And we were all shredding together. So it wasn't a question of whether we were going to ride together or not. We just were because we were, we were just best friends. When you didn't need to, like, I felt like you didn't need to, like, let us all kind of hang with you. You were, like, on a certain level already as Tina Bassett, you know? So it was interesting how you just kind of opened yeah. your arms to the people I that never came think to of myself like that. Yeah. So, I'd, you know, I've, I really, um, it wouldn't have been the same without you guys, really. I mean, it was, yeah, don't, you took me I remember all the, I remember all the Thanksgivings. Dude. I remember how you were in charge of a turkey <laughs> yeah, and like so <laughs> so-and-so was in charge of mashed potatoes. <laughs> I like organized it all out, wrote the names by what dishes everybody was taking. And so, I have pictures so of us like all crashed out in my living room and we would be either watching the weather channel <laughs> or yeah, we'd true, be watching waiting. like the football game. Oh my gosh. I remember uh-huh. you getting up and you walked <laughs> Uh-huh. Marco gets up. We're all there's like 15 dudes walking around. And he gets up and he starts going from the TV. He's like Denver's dope, and so am I. Because <laughs> we were watching like the Broncos or somebody playing, and, and you so just get I. up and you're like strut to go get some more nachos or something. You're just like Denver's dope, and so am I. <laughs> I must have felt at home. You were at home. Your, that your, was your place our home. was like our home. It was like forty two hundred square feet and like Dude, four floors. Extra tall or whatever. Everything was, was tall because it was a basketball professional like, basketball yeah, player. Like, up to my chin or something. Yeah, and there was like the mothership of like every single room had a CD player in the mothership, <laughs> oh, and it was all right. wired. I remember that. Yeah, we would get complaints from the neighbors because we just bust bust the beats. Yeah, That's the other th- fun memory I have of Marco is um, we were he hit got a ride with us and we were coming down and you were looking through my 
the zipper CD mm. wallet thing, and it was all like grunge music and um, <laughs> punk music and um, like whatever. And you're like, "Girl, where's your where's the hip hop?" <laughs> Mark's throwing CDs. He's just out. like <laughs> <laughs> he's like smashing pumpkins. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I could see. And that. you're like. Where's the hip hop? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> What's that? And then, What's and that? then he gets over and he goes, I guess TLC will be the <laughs> one. <laughs> so he's throwing the TLC in my like taupe colored oh, explorer. No. Don't go, go chase, chase the waterfalls. That's a, that's a quality track. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Dude. I think we t- went to the record store like the next day and bought a bunch of like Biggie Small and Tupac. Yep. Just updated my thing, and then we went go to Blockbuster and read a You're movie. Down and like, like that. yeah, totally. Yeah. Is that how you guys met? Was that time at Brighton? Yeah, I no, met him in the, met. in the in the parking, parking lot, lot with Justin. Classic snowboard. Yeah, and seriously, right like <laughs> that was our crew for years. Like we rode together all the time with Justin, yeah. and rode together all the time, um, just at the bird, just spinning laps on the tram. So good. Yes. I got. I mean, my snowboarding got better follow, trying to follow these guys around. Really, dude. Like Mark that's... Frank on the high speed roller over at Snowbird, just going a thousand miles per hour. That was like so you training, fun. training for uh, Alaska, right there. Yep. Um, you know, we sp- we're talking about um, Hostenek. I haven't even loaded it yet because it just came in. He sent us a guest question. Should we just go Let's... for it blind? Yeah, All we right. could play you it know later. What I mean? Play for it on the phone to see. Yeah. It's got to be about something that we're talking about. I bet. I would think. So we're going to just try this this way. Normally you load it up, but it just came in. That's the interesting part. You can load it later and play it. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Let's get, let me figure this out. <laughs> I could hear something. I got it figured out. You got to take it like that. Yo, Easto and Marco, Justin here. Yeah, Marco, I got a question for you. Tell us about the first snowboard you ever got and how you got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not about Alaska, but um, psh, let's go. Oh, man. Um, Jeez. Uh, let me think. A long time ago. You don't remember your first snowboard. <laughs> well, I, it's, I can't remember if it's the first or second, but one of them was a Burton Elite. But it was like the the tail had a little triangle in it, it. whatever you call that. Swallow tail. And it had a little metal rail, like, uh, sticking out of the bottom for some reason. I think this one has that as well. My first board had fins. What was up with those? (laughs) It uh, came from surfers, maybe. Disaster. That was a a friend's big brother that let me borrow it. But the first one I think that I got was, uh, so that was my second one. The the first one was, um, I don't even want to say it. Go ahead. My friend. It's okay. It's a safe place. Well, okay. Long time ago. Don't judge. Just kidding. Um, but, you know, I had some thugged out friends that didn't even snowboard, and they went up there, and they took a bunch of snowboards right. from a contest, Good and Fruity contest, from good the candy fruity. company, Good and, good and Fruity, that wow. that had did, said some contest, and, uh, and I got it from a, a homie. You can tell me someone stole a Good and Fruity snowboard? And then I t that board because it was all... Goofy, you know, and, and I, I, I spray painted it white and T bolt. My friend Taryn helped me T bolt these boards. I didn't even know what any of this was. It was, it was I, a good I, and was fruity first snowboard. Starting. Huh? A good and fruity snowboard? It was actually, yeah, it's good and fruity, but it was made by Lamar, I think. Oh, okay. If I remember that. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Lamar made these boards for good and fruity because they were going to have that contest, I guess. I wasn't up at the contest. Don't. Dudes just went up there, and then uh, we were down in Denver, and I was like, "That's a snowboard. Let me let me get that." And like, Go ahead. <laughs> and and then and then I, I didn't really know anything. And my friend Taryn that I met at Loveland, he's like, "That thing's all messed up." And uh, I'm so grateful for that dude because he, he kind of took me under the wing because I, I didn't really know how to set up bindings or anything like that. And he's like, no, that's all jacked up. You need a T-bolt. And I was like, what's this T-bolt? And he's like, just leave it here. I'll, 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 I'll come back in two days. I'm going to hook it up. And he T-bolted the thing with a good stance. And it, but this, it was 27 inches. I remember that. 27-inch inch stance? stance? Yeah. <laughs> T-bolted. Like my, my stance was 16 inches. Yeah. <laughs> 16? <laughs> that's Wait, when it went. You like, guys must have looked sick those together, dudes right? Had big <laughs> old pants. At Loveland, big old oh, pants. That's right. Oh. Big Gene Fantasy, though. Yeah, that, big that, pants, that, big that stance. Thing. And so I was like, all right. 
and I just started riding that board, and I was like trying to, like, <laughs> that was wild. Yeah. So he gave so me. It was you, a stone. You had a twelve it was a and a half. Board. You had a twelve and a half foot. So I mean, twenty-seven though. That's like. That's huge. Uh, you know what? Back it was a long time ago, dude. You had a stolen board. You know, it, people, is, it is what it is. But people know? might not know that the reason he had to T-bolt it is because. The stance. It gave you 16 to 18 yeah. inch, and then you wanted wider, so you had to T-bolt it. Yeah, it was so narrow. He's like, yeah. No, he's like, no, you, you got to step it out. That was a trend. He's, like, he's back like, you then. Can't, you can't have that crap. Like, you got to. It was. Yeah. You Boards back then stance, would have basically. like four holes up here, four holes up, and that was it. Like, you yeah. had to just. You had he, like. He hooked it up. An inch or two of wiggle room. But the, I have to say this, though, because, <laughs> see, uh, I. 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 Um. His that dude Taryn um, was my first taste of uh, mountain people, <coughs> like in the snowboard community. Because he didn't have to do any of that. He I don't know why he was doing that. He's like he could tell I was out of my place. I didn't know, you know. And, and I was like, why is he? You know that he's cool. And then I met his friends Loveland Posse. Shout out to Loveland Posse, OG. Like these guys, they just were all so cool. Like take you in. Super chill. It's not like the homies, you know, it's not like, I shouldn't say that, not like the homies, but like, it's not like people in inner city hood. I, I mean, hood shit. Like, that. it's just a different mentality. Everybody's happy, smiley, joyful, mountain living, no stress. Like, that's a whole different world than w- what I came from. you never seen it. He was my first taste of that. Like, whew. That was people like you. That. Like you guys, like when I met you guys, man, life changing. What was it like for you before that? Then, like, what was it the, the taste want, of that Denver? I don't life? even want to get it. Like, that's a whole you whole know, other chapter. Know. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, how did you bump into to Taryn then? Like, how do you, how does Marco find the mountains? Um, well, dude, dude was like. Terrence Moore. Tootie Fruity? <laughs> so that's how Marco finds the mountain? <laughs> Good and Fruity board? <laughs> Good and Fruity. No, like, well, Come on, so, that, and you know, that, that goes way back into, you know, my story and all that where, I don't we'll, know when we'll, we'll get, get into that. Yeah. yeah, but, like, you know, I just came from, the, I was a skater dude, and I just, I, I wanted to know more about the snowboarding. Like, it was, I knew that you could ollie bigger with the snowboard. You had a big ollie so on I, I was dog. just, I wanted to know more. You could crack an ollie. Tell you that with that ponytail. <laughs> 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 yeah. Love you, Marco. Yeah, Marco. Oh man. You that, were, you, you were such an easy person to just embrace, and and Facts. You, that's why you became that. friends with so many people so fast. Like whatever it is that we all love about you mm. was present then, and it is now. Like it's. I have a sample of it. Um, my brother-in-law said to I told this story. I heard this story. I think like three days ago, but he. Uh, so he, he met you, I don't even know where, I didn't, somewhere he meets you. And like a year and a half goes by. And he saw you again, and I wasn't around. It was like somewhere in California or something. Mm. And uh, he sees you, and he wasn't even going to say anything to you because he's like, oh, it's Mark Frank. He's, and you, you rolled up to him, and you're like, Ian, what up, dog? And he like, dude, he remembered who I was. He knows, he knows my name. Like, that's unheard of. You know, like mm. someone... Like you, they people think, you know, like you meet all these people, you travel around, you're Mark Frank. But you rolled up to him and remembered his name. And people just don't do that. They're not like that. They they have that inner city thing that you're talking about. Yeah. They're just like, I don't know, there's something about you. I've seen you on, on airplanes sit down with some random kid and talk to him for like four hours about who knows what. <laughs> and like most people are like headphones and, and don't talk to anybody. And so I did, there's just something that you do, I think, that is different than a lot of people. And I think that's, I don't know, it probably is the difference between the big dogs out there in their careers and the people that just don't get it, you know? And it's it's something special and unique about you that's really, really cool. So huh. I think... I uh, think it, yeah. it's part of the reason you. why you took everything so far as well because you were open to learn, like your mindset coming yeah. into it, like you were kind of in survival mode before that and then here's these people that yep. will wrap their arms around you and bring you on into their community so easily like yep. you you were willing and so eager to learn and get out of them and you know yeah. see what else was out there and i think that has a lot to do with 
um, your success through all of this of that you're open to learn. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah, definitely. I, I was open to learn for sure. I think I didn't even think of it like that, but I wanted to know more. Yeah. Yeah. And what a wonderful way to, to get to know more through those experiences that we all had. Like that's the yeah. best way of living. That is just the best way of living. For real. Like going from way his natural here. talent yeah. kind of helped too. Yeah. Well, I have a question. Yeah. I have a damn qu- good. Yeah. I have a question for you of um Uh-oh. Um when did you recognize that snowboarding was going to change your life and that you could really make something out of it and 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 earn money and take care of yourself? Like was there a moment where you got Shit. your first sponsor That's or your what, yeah. did you have a moment where you're like Maybe I can make something out of this. Maybe this is my life, not the Denver That's inner crazy city. You know. say, well, well, okay. Um, not that I knew that it that I was going to, but when I started to be like what you just said, maybe there is so, like maybe because, but th- but this was a process like because I talk about this a lot too. I didn't I didn't believe in myself. Um. I didn't know that I didn't believe in myself, but like, so Kelly Flynn, I remember the fuck, when you say that, I remember the, everything about the car, like everything about the, the, the day, the car, where we were. Cause he, he was, he was, I don't know, I couldn't figure it out. This dude was for years like that. God put that dude in my life. I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't talk to anybody. Because if you talk, like, if you, uh, you know, I, like, in high school, I just walked around like, like, everybody, like, everybody does. The fuck you looking at? And if you smile, it's, like, almost like you're, you're weak or something. Like, you're, I was programmed kind of to do that. Because that's how everybody is. Where, I, where I'm from. And uh, so I wasn't, like, networking type dude or, like, talk to pe- go out there and talk to people. Kelly, I couldn't figure him out because this dude was master networker like talk to everybody has angles he wanted to learn photography and so he's talking to you know and he's meeting people like justin hosnick and these guys and he knew everybody and i didn't i didn't know anybody i didn't want to talk to anybody and he goes dude you're and he kept he start he starts in you're good dude like and he's all friendly you know i was like meeting all these new skater friends downtown and uh and he's like he was so cool and he's like, you're, you're good, dude. You could, like, you could be sponsored, dude. And I was like, nah. I thought he was blowing smoke on my, like, why are you, what do you want? You know what I mean? Like, I was like, what does this guy want? He's like, dude, no, I'm telling you, you're like, good. You could be sponsored. Like, I'm going to talk to some people for you. I'm like thinking, what? Why? And he, he knew naked skateboards in Boulder and he knew these people. And he, like, we met. It, I didn't know, like, I met him downtown, but then we he went, we were we were both going to this school for people who weren't going to go to college. Huh. I was taking these stupid construction classes and um, mechanics or what, huh. I, I what, what even, grade? But he was in photography class, so he was like snapping photos. So he's like, I want to take some photos of you. I'm like, let's, we should go shoot. And I'm like, all right. He's like, dude, you're. you're and you this should. is in skateboarding. And then, so like years, and then, okay, I'm cutting the story shorter like years go by and he's like dude you you could be pro you know if you wanted to be pro like and i was like <laughs> yeah so he really encouraged Were you, guys friends you at this point or saw yeah. he saw what you couldn't see totally really. like he believed in me i didn't believe in me i didn't even, i didn't believe him because i didn't believe in me and i know that now but then like i don't know how many years five years this dude would pick me up. I'd be like, one time he picked me up straight out of, I was, he, my mom wouldn't get me out of jail. He got me out because she was tired of my shit. Couldn't get me out anyway. She had the money for bail or whatever. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. so pissed. And, and I somehow I got out because he had bailed me out and he already had picked up my snowboard stuff from my mom's house and was waiting for me. Wow. When I got Angel. out, yeah, in the car, Angel. he's got your gear. Let's go, dude. There's something better out there for you. Yeah, and then, and then, all right, 
And then we were driving, like, so I would, I would, like, we didn't, he had the car. I didn't, I didn't have, you know, we didn't have money. So I'd, like, steal the stuff from 7 Eleven. I'd, I'd slam, like, uh, Lunchables. I'd get, you know, I'd have the food for us. And then I'd, I would take the gas because you didn't have to have a credit card for the gas. So he had the car. We didn't have any money, but I'd get the gas and the food. And so, and duct tape the, the plate, fill up the gas, take off down the alley. You didn't, you need credit cards duct tape back the plate, then. Okay. Yeah. You I didn't have to prepay. You'd, Pump the gas yeah, and then go. And then go in. So I'd get the gas and the food, and he had the car. We'd help each other, right? Because he was learning photography. He's like, I'm gonna take photos of you. And so he just kept saying all this stuff. And then on the way back one time, we're driving back, and I was driving. He's like, dude, I don't think you're. I'm telling you, dude. Like you, you could be pro if you wanted. And I started thinking like. What if, what if I could, like, what if, like, you, you know, I don't know, some kind of, I really started thinking that. I was like, what, man, what if, what if he's telling the truth? Like, what if I, you know, I just started like, fuck, I'm going to put, all right, I'm going to motivate more and like, put, like, put more time and just like, take it more serious. And that, that was it. That was it. That was it. Like, straight up. I was like, I from then on, like I, I, I don't know that one. I, I talk about this you, all man. the time now because once you believe in, he believed in himself. When you believe in yourself, then you automatically believe in other people, and I didn't know that, but like you know, he was a he was a uh, he not was he's a born again. I didn't even know what that was a born again Christian. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know what that it really means, but yeah, what does that mean? T. There's different types or whatever, right? I'm just like, now, but anyway, you know, God put that guy in my life. God put a skateboard in my life. God put that dude right after that into my He's life. He's talented, too. He had an eye. He was yeah. good. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, just, he could talk to anybody. He would talk to people. He started talking to everybody I feel like me. he was instrumental in how we met, too, because I feel like he was out... Talking. He was, and that's it's, how, it's like, exactly. all of a sudden, you're at a party. I that wouldn't even be up there. And yeah, that's yeah. It, he's just. If it wasn't uh, for him, yeah, that's really. It's cool. amazing that people weave themselves themselves in and out of our story like that, and how just meeting, just for that one person coming into your life, shifted your whole path, and it was the path you were supposed to be on because what you've done. And the transformation that I've seen you grow from when I met you until now is extraordinary growth. And people yeah. sometimes can't even grow that much in a lifetime. And you've been open for it. And That's... it's amazing to watch. And I'm just so proud of you Aww. for taking those steps and, and finally believing in yourself because it's not um, self love is not always an easy thing to come about. For some people, on it's a real yeah. thing. It's such a value. And you started the conversation Thanks, with saying like, "I was walking down the hall, being like, what? Everyone was like that." And yeah, um, Tina and I were like, "We weren't like that." I think I was thinking that in my head. I was. Like, I didn't talk. <laughs> in, I wasn't like that. It's so I didn't different. talk in high school. I remember my friend Heather, who I grew up snowboarding with. Kind of, you know, I didn't discover snowboarding until I was sixteen. And my friend would introduce me like, this is my friend Tina. She didn't talk much, but... Oh, yeah, you're <laughs> one of those little wildflowers. Seriously, <laughs> like snowboarding <laughs> brought, brought me confidence. Like I was good at sports. Like I could throw a mean pitch in softball. I could hmm. play soccer. Like I spoke through my How quiet activities. Are we How quiet are we talking? <laughs> like I, I remember, I, I think for me it was a confidence thing. Like I remember being in cru crews of people and groups of people and they'd be just shooting the shit and I never knew how to chime in or what to how say. To like I shit. wasn't really following mm. the talking shit thing, you know, like I never knew where to chime in. Cause I'd be like, Oh yeah. Like super nerd <laughs> out. Like and everybody it, stop time, yeah. and look around like, See, what never she that. so I for me, like that. snowboarding brought, you know, for my family, snowboarding meant a lot to me too of like, were you, when you're a teenager, when you're in that time where you're just starting to get on your own and you got to survive or whatever it is, like you, that's when you really find out who you are and what you need to push on. And snowboarding brought me confidence, like, and I started be able to step up and be in guy, you know, 
groups of a bunch of dudes and then here's Tina. Like, that's how it was. Like, Shannon and I paired up a little bit and, you know, like at the contest, we were all the girls, but um, snowboarding really brought that for me and confidence. And I think sports just in general are such an awesome thing for people. Like, I see it in my daughter, Addison, and she's on the snowboarding team and what it brings to you when you get to go down to the bottom of the hill and high five your kid for joy. That's, that's right. Like that's what we want to share with our children is to bring that joy. And so like D'Angelo snowboarding or your kid, you know, like all those, like we have to lead by example. We have to show what love is for them to know how to love themselves really. So really what Kelly did for you and what the snowboarding community is they loved you really unconditionally seriously and that's what brought you so to be able to find yeah. your love for yourself and confidence and self-love it's just such a uh, because kelly didn't have to do thing. that you know none of you nobody has to had do, to do i think like that's that. a special thing yeah. about snowboarders is that we were all the outcasts just because we were on a snowboard so we were the unwanted mm -hmm. people and True. just as so when that happens like you just bond together yeah. and we're stronger together. Find each other. Totally. Like we found each other and, and just being in that time, like it's not like that now. Like, you know, some of Addie's snowboard friends, like I tell them like, Oh yeah, we weren't allowed on any of the mountains. We had to hike. Hmm. And hmm. they're like, what? And then I'm like, yeah, we didn't we have what they got. <laughs> high school snowboard teams. I'm like, what? <laughs> You know, yeah, like true, people true. don't know what, like, I remember sleeping in the back of a truck with Andy Hetzel and Dave Dowd slept under the truck up at <laughs> Whistler because we were trying to get up there to go to the contest. Like, you know, like it was not, and we had, had to, to we had to work hard to, to get our sponsorships and, and, and <laughs> prove ourselves to get our free ride. You know, it it wasn't like, oh, I'm a pro snowboarder now. I got a full ride. I'm good. Yeah. Like it, we had, you know, back in those days, like we had to make the connections and go to the trade shows and I had my resume all typed up. <laughs> no way. Yeah, on paper. <laughs> I, just, I never had a resume, dog. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to be on the same team there for a while when Sims yep, came around right. for that second push. Um, so we got to travel and do some uh, team trips and Japan and Europe and craziness. So you guys remember when we met Anna and Jolina Jolie in the airport? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it Travis was like a me. Tomb met. Raider. We were dice. Yeah. It's like Tomb, Tomb Raider, Raider time. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, and it's her and Travis <laughs> goes up and goes, "You you look tired." <laughs> he said that. That's that the worst thing you can say to any woman ever. You said, look yeah, tired. Like says, that's just you might as well just say you look you beat. Doing, dude? Yeah, nice you look wood. beat. Wood's typical mood right there. And I remember we were all playing dice and we could have went and talked with her and all that, but we were so into our game. Yeah, I remember Tina that rolled too. off and was talking and we just were like back to the dice. Yeah. That was fun. I wouldn't, wouldn't know what to say anyway. <laughs> yeah. Back to the dice. You would have said, dude, you J Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you supposed to be? <laughs> Dude, so you were on a vocational school headed for construction. That's wild. Oh man, yeah. That's a it would have been an interesting path. What what a God's finger I hated reaching it. down on you. I hated all that. And you probably didn't even yeah, did you like? Are were you good? Mm -hmm. Good at that construction? I wasn't even good at it. Yeah. Like, well, you you know, just knew if you, you don't had like to do something, something. You're not huh? gonna be that good at it. That's a fact, right? Mm -hmm. And I think um our conversation, people need to listen to what Kelly did for you and do that for someone else out there. I had a, one of my buddies was talking about their kids getting bullied right now. And it's like, dude, that is so whack. And uh, it doesn't have to be like that, dude. Be like Kelly Flynn. That's, that's good stuff. I'll make the t-shirts. Right? It's uh, <laughs> good shit. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, like what you're wearing, dude. That's dope. Yeah, my art shirt. Some, some tees original. So that's good. a little bit creepy, too. Dude, I'm dark. Dark. Dark Beautifully in a dark. Way. Dark yeah. in a positive way. Yes, yes. But dude, that's crazy, Marco. That's we're we're glad that you uh, headed towards snowboarding, dude. It, she would not have been the same. The whole sport might not have been the same. I tell you, crazy, Marco crazy. had an influence. The, I mean, I went out and bought an Impala. <laughs> 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 you would have done that anyway. <laughs> She's a G, man. She would have done that. She been had that. Oh man, yeah. I I seem to be the 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 common transportation <laughs> means for everybody. That was amazing. <laughs> I 
I remember driving down, is that 15 or 215 or uh, something? I always get those two highways Yeah, we, would, we went to Bricks, and I, I bet there was nine people in the car. <laughs> Marco was in the front with somebody else. I remember you're just, you guys were wrestling, like, in my front car. Oh, dude, we were going, like, 80, <laughs> and then... You just scream so like, dude, slow down. Travis is on the roof. Yes. Travis is like surfing the, surfing the he ski rack. He was doing the Teen Wolf. Oh, my gosh. Roof. I remember scolding everybody. We finally got to the 7-Eleven at the bottom of Brighton, and I'm no. like, everybody out of the car. <laughs> no more bullshit, man. No. I was so pissed. <laughs> and you were like, I'm going to go get some snacks. I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't. It was one of those, I've never seen one you of those snap on. Ra- very I, rare I, occasions I, where Marco drank, like one of the one time out of four thousand <laughs> times we went out, where Marco actually got a oh couple. Oh my beers. gosh! Remember Nuh-uh. the Long Island iced teas were like four feet <laughs> yeah. tall. I want to queue up this Pat Bridges um, thing because I think he he speaks on some of the stuff that we're talking about. Hmm. Once again, it's not loaded up because we're gonna <laughs> do that. We can load it. We're load it. it later. But I just think it fits in. It fits into to where we're at here. Cause he, we'll, we'll see where he goes. Hey, Marco. It's Pat Bridges. God, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. Hope you're doing well. I got a quick question for you, though. A couple times when we've uh, talked, you've talked about how you saw snowboarding as your ticket to get out of the city and how, you know, When it came to jibbing, you didn't quite get, you know, all these kids running from the mountains to head into the cities to hit handrails. Do you want to elaborate on that? That's crazy. Because we just talked about that a little bit, right? Yeah. But, uh, and half this shit is, I'm just, uh, you know, I was just talking shit just to to talk shit. I, I think I started to like doing that. But, um. What, talk shit on jibbing? No, just just or just to talk. <laughs> just you know, like a different way of looking at shit, just to talk the shit, you know. Because of course, jibbing's it's it's not bad. It was cool, but um, my perspective, just me, that was just me, my personal perspective. I was like, fuck that. I'm trying to get out the city. <laughs> that was my way out. It was my ticket. That was like a lot of, and I, I, I you know, driving down here, I was thinking of like I, I'm thinking about this, going on podcasts and everything, and. And uh, thinking how, like, sometimes, you know, there's different challenges for, for people c- transitioning out or whatever. And, and, I, and I, I, I talk about this kind of stuff every day with, like, coaching people and stuff because they have their identity. They have an identity that they kind of stick to. And I never had this identity of a snowboarder. So I didn't have a, too much of a challenge coming out of the, transitioning out because I, I wasn't a snowboarder. I wasn't even supposed to be a snowboarder. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I was, that was like that my shit talking way of being like, fuck that. You know, I don't want to jib. Like, okay, yeah, I'll yeah. jib, but I don't want to. I'll be up in the mountains, man. I'm trying to get out the city. That was just my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was the truth, but it was a funny way of saying it. That's and all. you were good at it, dude. We would go out to Brighton, and all of a sudden you're you're hitting that rail that's on top of a dam that's like 100 feet up. It's like your jibbing was kind of different jibbing, almost. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You did some, oh, well, you know that that the Brighton Dam classic. I have uh, a photo yeah. I can pop up. I was looking at it today, dude. It's huge. Well, like this. I have a story on that too, though. Yeah. Yeah. What, what you got? Uh, well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's a lot of this stuff wasn't even me, man. I I was trying to live up to, like, in that day, on that day, Cole. Cole pushed me. <laughs> Cole Cole's ready to get a shot. Like, you know, when people put effort in f- f- for the crew, for you, like, you, you're just trying to do the same. And I didn't want to let him, let anybody down. And I was shook. You were pretty shook. Half the time. I was just yeah. trying to keep up. Like, I would little learn things on photo shoots and on videos. Everybody already kind of knew these tricks. And I was learning them at the shoot, you know? Like, <laughs> and, uh, and so, okay. So I had, like, he's like, well, just, just, you know, go to the side and uh, just <laughs> test thing. Like, you don't have to hit the rail and uh, get, get, put your bind in on the top and like drop in. And so I did that. And like, I, I got to ease into things. It would take me longer. It would take me longer to, to warm up and everything than most people. Like, remember the, we were all there with uh, Nico Droz on one of these. It just sticks out to me so clear because we were with Nico. <laughs> Shout out to Nico Droz. 
brother, brother from Europe, like badass. And, uh, you know, we, do, we go to this rail, we set it up, and boom, he hits it first thing, just knocks it out. I'm like, bitch! Like, Dang. Not my turn. And they were all patient. They had to sit there for like an hour and a half till I got my shot, you know? <laughs> and he goes, just sitting there, ah, oh, but it's cool, man. Yeah, <laughs> smoking his ciggies and just... It's easier like, when, it, a, easier when it's a rail, though. Like, I felt the pressure when I'd go out with film crews. Like, if you're jumping a cliff... Oh, yeah. You can bomb hold the landing, then everybody's uh, like... Now we gotta build it's another really jaw. Now gotta we gotta go do here. another one. Whatever, like it, you know, at least on rails you can hit them multiple 1, times and times not not ruin like it. it. That was funny though. Yeah, like that that day was clear. Okay, I'm always the one that takes a little bit longer to warm up, for sure. The results were always <laughs> worth it though, yep. dude. Like the shots were sick, and that was back in the day when we'd have Thank to wait you. for film to get developed Ooh. and. Scary, Wait for the scary. slides and go over to the photographer's out. house and see if they came out. And well, that's stressful when you mm-hmm. go and pick up the the roll on a heavy session and you're just yeah. like, well, look plus, at it and you're like, oh. and I was always, uh, no, you know, I wasn't, I, I swear, uh, maybe, I don't know. I just I was always thinking of you guys more than me. Like, cause it was that's always, dope, dude. Well, I mean, okay. Cole put a lot in the, into shit, man. He was yeah. like instrumental. It, it, in, that's why. So in then a lot of people's careers. And half the time, you know, okay, I get I get the shot, but then I, I was like, yeah, but, and then I'm all guilty because I'm like, I'm going to keep them here for another hour until I get it the way I want to get it. <laughs> you know, I'm always thinking of that. Like, yeah. and you guys are all cold, you know, ah, fuck, in the cold. It's funny, though, because the writers, pro writers are always thinking that, oh, I don't want to keep you here and do this, but, dude, we want to get the shot, too. Like, we don't mm-hmm. want to walk away with something that's not as good as it could have been, and we want to make sure you're stoked, so it's like... Uh, writers are always thinking that and it's kind of you and all that but we got to get the shot and yeah. like mm-hmm. especially cold dude he didn't go up there to get the the shot that's all right you know yeah. it's like yeah Did but you when you ever... already get the shot and you're, and <laughs> and you're like, you guys oh, no. are like dude just really, yeah. you know, like, let me do it again the Scotty let me, let me Stevens just... like his hands a little off yeah. and like I gotta hit it 7,000 more times yeah. and then maybe it'll be okay but probably not I'm gonna hit this thing till yeah. sunset Did that, you? That is rough. Um, I have a question did you when going into once you got your snowboarding going and you're getting into film parts and stuff, did I just remember like making lists of tricks and like goals? Like, did mm. you have that thought process or were you just flying, doing whatever you could, or were you like, that's so that's making question. your list of tricks and checking them off when you got them done? I thought of that. I, it, it, so, and the, and the first time I ever saw it, I was like, you're like what? You make lists? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you see it? Do you remember? No. But some people put on their I fridge never and stuff. Did that. I never, never did that. I never. <laughs> but I think that's cool because I you had stretched. <laughs> I didn't go to the gym until after I was a professional <laughs> athlete. I mean, we really didn't think of ourselves as athletes like that. Yeah, like truth, really, like truth. we I were hiking. Stretched. We were hiking in three foot powder. Mm-hmm. That's plenty of workout. Yep. And I think that why I brought up the list is because I think that you're one of your strong points and what you brought to those moments is that you had this street background, this urban background, and then new to the mountains. And so wherever the crew ended up, you could creatively look at it Mm -hmm. and think of how to Mm -hmm. make something cool or write it in a certain way, or, you know, we were hitting wind lips or this or that or whatever. And I, that's why I asked if you had lists, because I feel like you kind of just showed up and then you know what? Made the, it up oh, and and pulled okay. it off. Yeah, that's no. Here's the difference. Well, I shouldn't say here's this is the only difference, but, but like that's it's kind of like uh, it's a mechanical. I don't want to throw any. You know, I don't. Everybody's different, right? I don't want to nothing bad about any. But when you, that's a me, more of a mechanical thing, where I I think the difference could be if I show up somewhere, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do whatever looks dope, and it's ever ever gonna fit that fit that look to where it looks the best if it's a you know hip going that way then whatever is going to look sick in that you know not everybody can see it that way i don't have a list there's no you know it just depends on the thing and then you adapt to the thing i appreciate that put you know put a creative photographer yeah individual thing that's going to just look dope on it there's nothing worse you show up to a spot and a rider's so focused on his list that he doesn't do a trick yeah. that yeah. would have been so dope because he's so caught up on it. Nope, I only need I got to uh, check this thing yeah. off. I but only I've, need this trick, yeah. and that's it. I'm not doing anything I else. think that's why Mar- Marcos stood out in the magazines and was 
and the videos is because there was that thought process. Because I was always curious, mm. like, okay, here's somebody that didn't come from snow, and you have this skate background, and mm. it's in your bones, you know, like it's in your soul, skateboarding, and then you adapted that to snowboarding in a certain way that was creative thinking-wise, and it worked. Mm. And I think it's uh, captured those moments that I think wow. were stepping stones to everybody took notice. It mm. really was because it's, you know, like, just like I was saying, like, I remember just building a kicker, we would go straight off it, and my ju my, I would pick my trick. Mm. You would look at it differently. Mm. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Boards. I mean, what what makes these things stand out to you? Because I got to be honest, a new company, man. It's 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 uh, you better be making some nice boards. You know what I mean to to stand out in uh, the landscape of today. And it felt I felt like right. that board had it because you were bouncing around. Your Aaron, you looked. I don't know how you do it at your age, um, but you you seem to be retaining the youth to some degree. And I guess it's just because you stay stay busy. You and LeBlanc yeah. was it. Was it Aaliyah or R. Kelly that said, AJ, nothing but a number? <laughs> That's what I feel that. Um, and have you tried the uh, Malibu or no? Another board that they're putting? Yeah, so the, the first board I got was a Malibu. Um, and I thought that was super awesome and fun. Like, I love the shape of it just in general. Like, the, the way they crafted it, I thought was super cool. Um, I didn't end up riding it how it was really meant to be ridden because it's kind of more of like a powder board. Yes. Um, and I just ran the stance all the way forward to get it more centered over the contact points. And then I took it to Woodward and I wrote it there and it was totally fun. Um, even though that's not really what it was meant for. And, you know, cause you got so much nose, so little tail and stuff, but mm. that board road rode awesome. And I know people ride that one like all over the place. Yeah. It's kind of designed to be shredded around Mount Baker, I think. But in, in today's world, I feel like, you know, not everyone can afford the quiver. And uh, that thing's, it's definitely in the back seat, but like you're saying, you can push it, push it forward and go out and have a good time in a place like Woodward. And that's dope. That's sick, man. Yeah. I mean, Pretty it poppy. is kind of like these boards poppy or what? Want. a lot of snap. Yeah. So like the 148 that I ride is, um, you know, kind of like a true twin style freestyle all mountain board. And that one's got lots of great pop and it, you know, it's designed to be, um, you know, more centered because that's how I want to ride. Dope, dope brand, good people um, that are passionate about snowboarding, just like you and I are. And uh, it's funny, they they uh, originally, one of the shapers and uh, creators of the brand made this board behind me, the Malibu, um, for one of his, for his cousin, I think, and uh, just wanted to make him a cool custom shape. So he made this board and it turns out, People were just loving it. Everyone who got on it loved this board. So they were like, we're putting this in the line. And it became the Malibu. They submitted that to uh, White Line's board review um, for 2023-24. This bad boy won one of the top free ride boards of the year. And that's huge. You're going in the ring against, you know, the biggest companies out there with Burton and, and uh, you know, Nitro and Solomon. These guys who have years and years and years of R and D down and, and, uh, you know, they've kind of perfected the science, you know, Capita's got the mothership dude. And all these guys rightfully also have boards in that category that have won awards, but, uh, you know, to sit neck and neck with them is, is a big deal. And it just goes to show that this board rips. And if you're looking for a new board, the Malibu is, uh, is the board you're going to want to grab. And it's only from now until the end of the year. So grab one, 
Uh, you will not be sorry. This board, just look at the shape, man. This board just wants to go. Get that thing in some powder, and uh, phew, you're going to have one of those days, one of those days you're never going to forget. Um, check it out, man. I wouldn't steer you wrong. These boards are uh, made top quality by top quality people, and uh, it doesn't get any better than that, man. Support support these guys on the come up, man, because they got big things coming in the future. But the Malibu, Malibu's where it's at right now. Let's go. Before I get deep into the ads, man, woo! The re-release here. Blotto's phone book. Dude, this is epic, man. Blotto uh, basically goes around, you know, we all have our, our uh, phone in our pocket, and our phone is now a camera. Blotto just breaks it down in here. Uh, he travels, man. This guy travels like a, a tra champion, and he really uh, utilizes his uh, phone camera, of course, just like we all do. But also, he kind of gets into, uh, in his intro here, he just talks about how uh, – how useful your phone is in capturing life's moments, no matter location, environment, or time of day. I'll share knowledge, techniques, stories, and ideas in hopes that these words and photos will inspire you to take more pictures while evolving your photography with a newfound perspective and respect of your surroundings. So, dude, not only is he showing you his dope photos, but he's letting you in on some secrets, man. The, uh, I mean, we're talking about long time, long time photog here, man. And uh, he's letting you in on it. Not only is he a longtime photographer, he also is the guy that uh, gave me my first camera. I got Blotto's uh, hand-me-down and uh, started, started me off, man. So uh, let's let him start you guys off. Um, now, I noticed uh, on the back here, it's all DeanBlottoGray.com. Um, but I also noticed this thing's for sale at the uh, Slush, the magazine website. Um, so get, get yourself one, man. And also when you buy one of these, it supports, supports snowboarding and supports Blotto out there making more of these. And you know, the cycle, the cycle continues, man. The culture thrives, support Blotto and, uh, get yourself Blotto phone book. I'll be keeping one of these on set and, uh, be checking it out from time to time as well. Boom. New stuff in the merch shop. What up now? Stickers. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Who doesn't love stickers, man? Um, Stoney's Buds Merch Shop. We got stickers in. Um, bam. There's sticker packs going on. There's even, there's Nomi, Nomi stickers. There's, there's So Good My Dog stickers. There's Boarding House Podcast Studio. Stoney Buds uh, Exclusive, son. Um, we, we got it all, man. There's big sticker packs, little sticker packs. Cool thing about sticker packs is... You know, the, the small ones, $9.95. The big dogs, like, I think $13.95. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but I think that's what it is. And uh, that's dope, man. Just something, something cheap. Um, and, you know, when you make an order that ships from here, like a signed print, I uh, I usually try to throw a sticker in, too. I also got these thank you thank you photo cards in, which are pretty dope. Just sign a little, little satin, say thank you. I sign it back. Put them out with my orders. Um and that's from uh, from the, the merch shop. For the e eastonephoto.com, my uh, Sony Buzz print shop, I'll pop the link up. Um, check it out, man. I got photos from throughout my career, all sizes, uh, museum quality. Um, they all have a white, white border, kind of like this dog. It also says uh, the rider's name on there. Um, like I said, they, they, they go from, uh, what, I think 8 by 12 all the way up to big old photos. So, uh, I mean, you look around in the studio, what, what gives this place the vibe is, uh, is the photos. And it, it's really what, what kind of livens, livens this place up. Um, so, yeah, that's, that I think is uh, kind of, you need to get it, get, get photos on your walls. And I think it helps, it helps with depression, man. It keeps you stoked. It, uh. It just it creates a vibe. It wants to get you get you out snowboarding. It gets people talking. It uh it uh just just lifts a cloud of depression maybe because you're just surrounded by cool stuff. And you know there's plenty of other photographers to choose from. Artists, man, like like Gucci Ghost and that stuff can get kind of spendy, but woo, that stuff will uplift. You just check that thing out and be like, boom, that's that's dope. But you know it's uh it's Stony Buds. Print shop, let's go. Get some of that. Look at these coasters, first of all. 
I don't even know where I got these. I'm, I'm, I think the gnomes built these. Um, their pallets, just like we used to use to build build like kickers out, out when we were doing jibs. The gnomes built a bunch of pallets, man. So I got these as coasters and pretty tight, dude. I didn't know the gnomes were doing that. Um, yeah, so so uh, you know, four gnomes, by gnomes. These things were 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 handcrafted by the gnomes. It's uh, gnomey buds, dude. This is uh, I think I got eleven ounce, fifteen ounce. 20 ounce, the big dog. I haven't even seen that yet. Um, you know, paying homage to fallen, fallen good friend J2 right here. And it's me as a gnome kind of paying respect to, uh, to snowboard culture. And I always wanted a board collection. And, uh, this is the extent of my collection in here. I got like five boards. And, uh, instead of a board collection, I am now getting a uh, coffee mug collection that features the boards as well as the kits of uh you know the fits that the people were 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 wearing in that time um like dead lung this is a, a fit that dead lung would uh wear when he had the nug board which is dope there's things like the grocer um skull board the lip tech and uh there's some new ones in the works too of course kind of linking them out uh leaking them out um slowly here and there i think i'm gonna start popping out like one a month or something just the slow creeper um on the patreon there's actually um the mug of the month um, membership tier. And that's like for the price of a mug. I think it's like 20, 25 bucks a month. Cause I think a mug with shipping is around 25 bucks. And uh, you know, you'll get a new one each month. And uh, before you know it, man, you will have a sick Nomi mugs collection at the crib featuring the snowboards and paying respect to the uh, pro snowboarders that, that made it all happen. Word up, man. And uh Let's, uh, yeah, I think that about does it. Let's, let's get back to the show. And, uh, I think, uh, boom. Anyways, on that <laughs> note, uh, dude, you guys, it's crazy how the level of snowboarding, even if it's a mellow day, the injuries that come into play that can potentially as a pro, like me mess up your whole career. Cause I've, I've even seen when you guys are out, someone, I'm going to say you guys as pros. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone just signed a contract and it's like. They might have blown out their knee. Oh. Like, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we got to get this True. done. It's like, because maybe the it sucks, but maybe all of a sudden you won't get signed because they hear you have a bad knee. And that's something, it's real, and injuries are going to happen. And you're going to, I have never heard of a pro snowboarder not get hurt. It's, well, it's part of the progression, yeah, I think. I feel like you were always injured. <laughs> Yeah, he was uh -huh. taped up. I feel like you're <laughs> always some sort of brain taping blows. your thumb, back, and like wrist. And I have a photo. I'll pop up crooked, crooked fingers. fingers. I have a photo I found today. I'll pop up on the screen. Uh, you're skateboarding with two casts, just one on each hand. So one, Marco, one's lighter, one's bigger. And it's like, <laughs> you're still killing it though. Yeah, but don't you feel like that's how you progress? Really, like if you're only going yeah, no taking it, it to this limit, safety zone, like you got to make that next step if you really want to stay in the game. Yeah, there's, I, I talk about that a lot lately too. Because same in, you know, these are like laws of success. If you're not, if you're not crashing and burning and blowing it, you're not trying hard enough for sure, right? But you know, there's calculated stuff too, though. Like, start small, push it all the time. Just always being like, you know, be comfortable with being risks. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And then there's Kurt Wastel just. <laughs> I was, I, was, yep, I was about to say that. Yep. Where, where are you going to say that? Props to Kurt. So many times riding with him, I'm like, damn, dude. Like, damn. Planning's back there. Aren't you going to warm up? Yeah. <laughs> so baby steps. Yeah. And you, uh, you're you going to get hurt. So, yeah, how do you deal with it all? I think so? you would get hurt. I don't even think it would phase you. I feel like you would just ride with broken wrists or whatever. Like, nothing really was stopping you. Well, um, it did. Well, I like. I, I, I wouldn't. Ah, nobody likes it, but I like. Didn't especially you like that? if you if you break something, you know, your body naturally will bring it back even stronger. And I felt like that, oh. but that can't. Uh, another crazy story for that. Um, that came from. Like a lot. Eh, I don't know if I should go there. Go there. <laughs> go there. Well. For, <laughs> okay. Well, okay, but first, let me just. Um, See, there's like so. I don't want to talk too much. Like, there, you could just go into these things with these so much micro things, yeah. Like, um, you know, yeah, like you're not living. Like, I don't understand how 
I literally can't, I can't, I don't understand a lot of people where they don't take, you know, they're not like not out there, out on a limb doing, doing crazy shit. Like it's not living, right? If you're not almost dying, I don't know. It's, you know, like, I'm not saying that you should be crazy and not take, you know, and take these like stupid risks. I'm just saying though, if you're not on the edge every day, it's like you're not even alive. If I, I would, I would almost like being her because then I knew I was doing some wild other stuff that I, I was, I didn't know yet. And you're always like trying to. It was like confirmation next... that you're yeah. pushing it. You're a pro. And then, um, but the other thing we we're, were talking about it on just now a little bit ago, where it's like. I, I, I don't want to say it, but like I, I liked getting hurt, not for the reasons that people think, but like when I'm healthy, I, I wouldn't, I, there was no time. We were always shooting. We we're always. It's go, go, go. It yeah. Doing something, doing something. I couldn't, get, I couldn't study and read, read books and like learn the other things that I want to learn and de- you know, even like learn DJing or, or learning some business stuff. What was a squeak for? What did you uh, do that was some DJing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can't even like make a doctor's appointment. You can't. Like, no, but when I got anything. hurt, when I got hurt, man, I, I, I didn't. Mind. Okay, it hurts kind of, but you're, you're, then you have time to. Okay, let me study on some stuff and <laughs> and get like you know. Just get your I life back yeah. together. Because huh? I was go- learning, I was already kind of looking at other things, learning the next thing, you know. And, and I like, I didn't mind getting hurt, and and because I would hear how other people when they get hurt and they blow something. And they're out for a while. They're like all bummed down, going like depression. Over. That never happened with me. I was like kind of pumped on it. That's because you're open to learn more. You really wanted to learn more. I was. I was. What I, was I, your I really... biggest thing that you sh- shifted to? Was it like finance, interest, or like? It just it, it did, What were on you the time. studying? Yeah, there's there's stages that stick out to me big time. But you know, first when I was younger, it was like you know djing and and like i wanted to know about the more like the business side of things when you know even like the toe cap like the, the, you know the inventions and i don't know i just knew there was Suck other up stuff i wasn't can, huh? i wasn't i wasn't like only snowboarding i want I, I was like i got fomo on everything <laughs> fomo like i swear you know so you'd want to be starting businesses and looking in and just growth anywhere you can huh well i just knew you know going going from Denver, inner city, hood to Vail, where there's like, <laughs> damn, there's a whole, Such there's a actually contrast. a world out here. Yeah. Like there's a, there's on. a, there's a world outside of the city. And then you get up there and there's like all this, you, can, you there's money. Yeah. Like, and then there's, dude, there's people that they're not any, you know, they're, they're loaded. Right. And they're, they're, but they're not any smarter than we are. They're, they're not funnier. They don't have more charisma. They're, they they dress like goobers. Like, I'm like, what? How are you? You know, what's the secret? And, and, oh man, see, I don't, I can end up talking forever because, you know how like, some people they're up, back up. You know, they they're the better way they than dress, you in their like minds. they're uppity. Yeah, they, there's yeah. this look that they give you, right? They're like, you can see it. I've it's I've it's happened to me where it's like they they give you this like <laughs> like, like they kind of just look like that kind of. Judging, you're like, like up and down. Judging you for sure. Yeah. And uh, it, but then the snowboarders look at them like they're goobers, right? But then they're <laughs> looking at us like we're goobers, and it's like, and I was always thinking, what do they know that I, what do what they know that I don't? And that's what I was after, like, what? What is it? Yeah, I want to know what that. How do they have the nerve to be looking at me like that? So what do they know? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Knowledge is that's power. That's a whole man. process. Yeah, that's where I, that's when I started, you know, read reading the books and. I was always impressed. Uh, you don't see a lot of pro snowboarders reading books, you know? So it is always refreshing. <laughs> I'm just impressed that he used the word goober. Yeah, goober, dude. Just do a goober on us. <laughs> That's all I could. <laughs> I remember being injured and having the feeling like, okay, I'm safe for a minute. <laughs> oh, because wow. seriously, like... You're going to be back out there. I just felt safe, like, okay... For the next whatever six to eight weeks, I'm going to be watching blockbuster videos, and I'm safe because there is a, you know, like snowboarding's not a safe sport. It's very dangerous. Mother Nature's danger. We watch friends get taken out and mm. go through some serious injuries. So it's no, no joke. You know, um, it's not an easy thing to get through. But 
Um, I feel like at the end of my life, if my body is ragged and torn, then I did live a good life. Yeah, like that's, that. That quote, that's, that's what like, it is. That quote that's out there yeah. is like, I, I'm not going to die being safe and in one piece yeah. and all that stuff. Like, I, I, I can't. Well, it takes a lot of bravery to do that in your life. So maybe that's what snowboarding brought to us to give us that avenue to follow life to the fullest. Mm. You know, it's a, um, it's kind of a, you wake up to it and then you can't live without it. You just know. Like, it's almost like a, you know you're doing some shit if you're hurt <laughs> from doing some yeah. shit. Facts. Like, you pushed it yeah. to the level. Yeah. Except, uh, Except what? Well, because I was thinking, okay, what, what are you going to ask me or whatever? And like, you know, some of the worst injuries where it's like, I never told anybody. Okay, I never told anybody about this. This is crazy, though. It's so crazy because my, my, my wife asked me on the way over here. And I, and I was like, holy give crap. Your wife, give your wife a lawyer, huh? Yes. yes. Angel. <laughs> Sweetheart. Oh my gosh, total angel for me. But um, so we were, so, well, I think it was Whitey. Um, they were building the jump over the, the road. Yes, yeah, I remember Brayden. that. Yep. Were you there? Yeah, it was kind of like, it was wild. And, and it we, just, built it, we built it too, like up. So I pop. freaking, I think I was the first one to Guinea. Or Real so, flat, right? Yeah, well, you know, coming off the hill, but we, I think we did it too high up. It wasn't at the right trajectory. You end up I, in the middle I of the road? First, you went first. And I, I hit the road, but I hit my head on the road. Oh, no. Nobody knew. I just kind of hit, hit. I was with you that day, I think. And, uh, bro, I got up. My eye was cross. I was cross-eyed, and I couldn't get what? my eye back. I, I was like, no, no, please. Am I going to be cross-eyed? I was like, and Not it working. took me a couple minutes. To, I was like trying to work it out. Like, it's please. Stuck. Don't let me be cross-eyed for the rest of my life. And it was stuck. And it was it was stuck. I was panicking. I was like, no, no, nobody knew. How I didn't long? say Scary. anything. How long? I've never heard of that happening. Yeah. That's how, I I mean, I have. That happened to me, actually. Nuh-uh. I slammed my head. Scary. So you that's fall sca- so That was one of the hard. scariest so injuries. Your eyeball gets what stuck. What happened to me is I hit my head so hard that I fractured my orbit. Oh, and it, no. my oh. muscles got stuck in it. What? <laughs> So it got. The doctor and they it, said they were going to do surgery, and my mom was like, "We're going to throw some essential oils on that. It's going to be fine." <laughs> and you know what we did? We that. threw essential oils on it tussin. like once an hour, and it was fine. It <laughs> released on hour. its own. <laughs> oh, so it popped out. Yeah. Wow. I Is wonder that if that happened stuff, to you. Like no, 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 no. I didn't break. You didn't it, break I was, anything. I was just. I was. I, I was. I was getting up, and I'm like, I couldn't see right, and I knew that my right eye was like. Yeah, you can feel they, it. They were cross-eyed, and my. It was so stuck. Crazy I couldn't that... get it back, and I was sitting there going, "Oh God!" Wait, wait, it's so top. crazy Everybody that we like, didn't wear helmets. Right? No, back Jumping then. On the road. We did so much crazy stuff without helmets on, covering our like. Yeah, and then I'm like, "Look, uh, Zeus, Tiny Lester over there." I'm five minutes Alaska later, five no minutes later, on. came back. Finally, like got five minutes, right? like or three, five. It yeah. seemed yeah. like two hours. Yeah, it seemed like <laughs> six weeks. But that was one that was. I was like, "Oh, did you like look at it in a mirror?" Car rear view mirror or something? No, I was just s- s- sitting, sitting there, there trying cross-eyed. to work it out. Like, please, like, work in the muscle. Like, dude, when please, you came up, please When you guys come cross. up with big stuff like that, like, you know, it's all the bros. Imagine, like, 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 I'm like, yo, what's up, guys? Yeah. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> cross-eyed Marco. Ever since Marco went cross-eyed, man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to shoot those lifestyle photos. He's <laughs> <laughs> always got his goggles on. <laughs> Getting you eye patch, dude. That'd would you tight. Rochambeau for who went first when yeah, stuff got that lost, big? Dude. It wasn't even that big. I <laughs> we just built it, it wrong. wrong. That was a lesson. I was like, I was making sure the jumps were built at the right tra- like trajectory yeah. after that. Yeah. yeah. That remember the scene? Do you guys remember the scene of like everybody getting up earlier than the other person and getting out there to build the kickers, to, you know, like, and then, oh, there's already a crew up there. We got to go this way. and Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, I'd be, like, calling you, dragging yeah, was, you out of say, bed at 11. You early I birds, say, man. I don't I'm know like, about that. <laughs> Marco would get up at 3. I remember one time. I was, I was just like, yeah, I, was, I totally yeah. remember me. Yeah. Yeah. called me, and I had to, like, he was supposed to be helling, and 
I, my job was to wake up Marco and I got shit thrown at me and it's like a 16 like, year old teenager. Do you know how many people be stoked to go to go do this and in this fool's throwing his shoes at me like get, to, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping, man. I'm tired. <laughs> Marco. And uh, they waited for him. That's the funniest part. It's like, we got to get Marco in here. He was that and, good. Yeah. So whatever. He was yeah. that good, I guess. But yeah. you wouldn't catch him in that playing that early game, yeah. I don't think. Well, I, or me. <laughs> yeah. I would. I'd get up and get there. You were a go-getter. I was a go-getter. <laughs> yeah, uh, Marco's just types. going to get it at night, though. So it's all, it's I'll all wake relative. up after. Yeah. yeah after it's two, all relative. three, I'm, I'm up. Are you still, do you still do that? <laughs> no. You can't with Luca, huh? That's... Well, not even that. Just that. Just in general, you it's just, just don't not, do that. Yeah. It's not. Um, it's not conducive to the rest of the world, is it? Yeah, no. What if you're working with Asian markets? <laughs> then yes, <laughs> they they wake up at like I don't know. Their day starts at what six or seven. Right now, they're just getting ready to yeah. start the day. <laughs> yeah, start the day. So you know. Now, see, that's another reason why I'm so grateful and thankful to everyone because I th- I thought that it was, you know, me like. So, you know, not all the way, but like, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm doing, but it, when you, I, I I asked Justin, I was like, man, you know, I don't know if I ever, like, I, I had to tell him, like, I'm so grateful for you, man. And, and, uh, but I never, I hope I, like, I, I, I want to say, I don't know, I had said something like that. I, I like, um, just, it it wasn't like I didn't I wasn't mo- like I didn't wake up early I, I didn't know any of that stuff. Um, they were motivated. I wasn't that motivated. Like okay, once I'm there, I'm like I'm the, won't stop until I get the thing or whatever. But in the morning, it was him that would be like, "Come on, get up, Cole." He could have left you be behind. Like, certain but he personalities didn't. that you need in the in the team to do that for people, and I'm so grateful because without it, it wouldn't have been because of me. Okay, dude, I wouldn't have the photo career around. if Cole wasn't getting yeah. me pushed too. It's like it's yeah. the same thing. It's like you need that that person. You do, man. Yeah. Without them, there's there's personalities that you need in the team, and hopefully they need us too because uh, Cole will just leave us behind. I guess at one point. <laughs> <laughs> no. But he was a he was a very motivated person, or is. I mean, he's yeah. he's out. He's doing some shoot right now. Where yeah, he's, he's like running right some now, crew. He's probably, it. I'm sure he just sent. Send a text. Actually, he is he's getting it right now, just in the studio, nice. so it doesn't stop. But yeah, you need those those grinders, and I guess that's where T comes in too. She's like a make sure everyone's gonna get up and be that earlier person on that crew, or get us home safe or whatever. Gather them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all cr- crew dynamic. Yeah. What other noticeable or notable injuries? I I think I remember one a Stratton uh, contest. Didn't you like do a contest and me? Yeah, no. Come up short and a I jump. Remember you no? in oh, East well, Coast? <laughs> there's so many. There's so many. You mean are you talking scariest ones or I don't know? Notable just different types of yeah. injuries. Um, the Did worst any one. of them like worry you that you weren't going to be able to snowboard anymore? Mm. Yeah. Damn. When, what? When was that? The, well, the one was. Um, uh, Crushed. Man, see, it's always doing the stupidest things too, man. <laughs> That's, that is how it goes. Huh? When you're messing around or you're a little kind of tired at the end and you're just yeah. tinkering or whatever. But um, so, but one was just right at Snowbird when I was I was like I was hitting powder. I, I was like some for some reason I was going, you know, I was riding switch and I was riding a super fast switch, but it was powder. So I went to just kind of half cab and I caught my edge and went head first into the packed powder. Ooh, and crushed. So I. Went straight head first. It crushed those couple of sponge vertebrae in, right there. How damn. Oh, I man. Never knew about that, that was injury. the most painful by far and the longest because it went in. I, I couldn't do anything for a year. A year? Yeah. And that's one of those. Did you get carried down in a sled? About keep things under kind of yeah, quiet. yeah. That's don't, one of those like, things where let's keep that know, check I still. Kept that quiet. <laughs> but, um, oh, man, that freaking was, it burned. It hurt me so bad. Um, and then. And then it had like it killed some nerves back here. I can still feel yeah. them. Um, really? Oh man! Did you get taken down in a sled? No, like I ski went patrol? Down. Like you just rode down? In a long ass injury. So like that. you jammed your head in so yeah, hard just, that it, like yeah, head first, and it just Ouch. is your neck it shorter? Put, it, did you shrink? I mean, probably. what are we talking about here? Yeah, it took a long time for that little spongy thing to. And were come you back. like worried that it is like everyday life might get affected? Like it hurt that much or? 
You yeah, knew you'd I, get through it? I or? couldn't do anything. It was just, everything hurt. It, it just always hurt, and it killed these nerves back there, these muscles. That, what did the doctors want to do? Sucked. It just like the all. It was a year that way. A year. That's crazy. Did you ever have feelings like, what am I going to do if I can't snowboard? Mm-hmm. Like just for survival of work or that's actually like, a big point. That's probably was the first. I don't know if it was the first time, but one one of the major times when I was like, yeah, you got to think about other things. And but so then I was kind of stoked. I was like, all right, that gave me time to start working on other things. I'm I'm so I'm happy for plan. that. Almost See, like most people are backup plan. bummed on that. I'm kind of happy for that because that kind of started setting me up for things, my, the next future things. Even though I was still, and then it, then of course I healed and got right back out there. Yeah, but, it's that wake up call, I guess, huh? That's all of a sudden like, oh man, there's gonna be life after. What? How do I do this? What's next? Did Especially you know, when you're used to yeah. a certain level of income. and yeah. Were you always, you right? um, did you have just a long stretch where you were making money from snowboarding? Like when did the next chapter of what you were interested in start to, the path started to shift? That kind of came way later because, uh, you know, when when that that injury happened, that spongy, you know, I hurt that vertebrae stuff. Um that was when it was starting to upswing. So I had these new contracts. Like big money in. contracts. Well, it wasn't even bigger. It was just enough to live on. Like, and I had got an apartment um, there in Salt Lake. Like, so it was enough for that. But it was a brand new. Like, I was locked in then for like two, three years. So I, I wasn't really. Well, you had like a three panicked. year, a three year deal. I wasn't panicked to enough okay, to I gotta survive. figure out my plan B. Yeah. I just wanted to do it anyway. But I'm happy for it now. You start to learn. How to be, how how things happen for you, not to you. Mm. Like you, once you, I'm that's, so clear on that these days. Yes, yeah. that's actually a big thing they push to you uh, in rehab. Is yeah, things happen. You got to get out of that state of mind. That person that's sitting there that's just like, oh man, and and then it's like everyone's out to get me almost. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. this happened, and then this I just can't get out of this rut, and I can't do this, I can't do that. You got to start changing your mindset. They happened for me, not to me. And let's make the the best of this situation. Um, and you just got to go through life being positive. You can't be that negative Nelly because it's just going to attract more negative. And yeah. it's, it's all a perspective. Huge, huge thing Such they want your mindset to start doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, how did you realize that 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 key factor then to start switching your mindset? Like, what was the the kick? In well, life I, I didn't see so many things that I'll talk about. Maybe as we evolve your things. story, I, um, I didn't know what I did when I did it, but then like things like uh. Anthony Robbins, I learned that what you just said in uh, Anthony Robbins some workshops and stuff. Oh, we're calling him Anthony, Tony Robbins, Anthony I, Robbins. <laughs> I never heard of Anthony my dog. Robbins. <laughs> Shout out to Anthony Robbins! Oh, yeah. Holy crap, man! But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like you know, I can't. I, I, so I went to Anthony Robbins later in my in in my career for because I thought you know you hear of how he, he's able to put help athletes anchor back into their peak states you know the big Andre Agassi and Serena Williams and all this so I'm like I was thinking all right let me invest in myself and are these like one on one meetings no or just big, big yeah big it, it depends Every, everyone's different you know it's as they're more intimate it gets more expensive but it's every penny is worth it that you invest in yourself. I'll just tell you that straight up because people think you're crazy when you start putting 10 grand into the that's a lot weekends and stuff. It's, but it's every, it's so freaking worth it. So I can't, I, I went originally, I went in there thinking, okay, athlete stuff. I came out of there with a better relationship with my mom. <laughs> Damn. Wow. And everyone else. And she like, wasn't with you, right? Well, you know, she, no, no. Yeah. She, but you know, I grew up with an alcoholic mom, and that, that I, I, I found out how bad that impacted me, and, and every it could have g- kept going. That's why I never drank. Yeah. Um. But uh, but see, I came out of there like you know all these freaking, I don't know, just dudes chasing you know her boyfriends, alcoholic, wino ass boyfriend chasing me down the alley, and just all kinds of crazy shit that I grew up with, and my and that my sister and I went through, and all that. And I came out of there glad that all of it happened because huh. it built me into the like strong like person I needed to be to do what I was going to do next and what I'm doing now. Like that was on purpose. That was put there on purpose for me. 
did uh did the experiences like release new memories that had happened to you back then like just talking about that stuff i don't when i was in in rehab i got home and all of a sudden like weeks later with the programming that's done to you i was remembering things that i don't remember in so long Mm -hmm. with those type of situations i don't know did that happen to you um man see that's that that's that's why i was like i can talk for for on all this stuff because everything I didn't know what I did when I did it, but I, from all the workshops and trainings and coaching and books and stuff, you start to put these things together. And now I, I know exactly what I did. Yeah. And everything connects. Like I'm seeing things so clearly these days. And it's now crazy. you're tight with your mom when you weren't be, yeah. for a bit. And you're, uh-huh. you're tight with your mom now. Is that what you're saying? Or you have a bad, not let's not say tight. Yeah. It's a better relationship yeah. because what you've, you've accepted her or just, you know, it has nothing to do with you. Like, what? What is it? It's just you just realize that it all made you who you are. I guess. Yeah. Well, well like, some of that strength, like really, when you have enough strength to break the chain, like you realize you didn't want to be and take the same path as your mother did, and it takes a lot to break the chain because that's what you grew up with, and so whatever hardships or battles or barriers that you push through to get to the strong Marco. You were strong enough to stop that from becoming you. Mm. And that's a big thing that you really were inspired by those speakings of those people in those conferences to realize that you were strong enough to break it and stop there. Well, and it's a rewire. It's a full on rewire, right? um, Perspective, right? Because you could either, you know, if you're, this is with anything, you can say alcohol too, because I have friends that they they did exactly what their dad did. Well, that's what she she was doing. she was blaming her dad for her doing the same thing, right? And the chain just yeah. keeps going. And yeah, you could how far up the thing are you going to blame? You know, like yeah. in it, right? And there's nobody to blame. Yeah, you got to so, take ownership of it. Yeah, but so you can either do the same exact thing, or you're so freaking hateful, pissed about it that you're gonna. I'm never gonna be like that. And that's, and that's what, what you I are. Did. I don't remember you ever really being drunk, actually. Now that I think, no, I, didn't drink, I didn't. I didn't drink one drop till I was like twenty something years old. No shit. Like That's strong to do that, Marco. That's, That's crazy. not easy to do. And even it even is. then, I was scared. Like I, I don't ever. I won't ever go there. I mean, you never it smoked weed. Pain. Like, you never did any of it. Well, it's a whole. It's it's your childhood, and it's there, mm-hmm. and you want to separate it. Yeah. That's so, a big. Yeah. That takes a lot of strength to do that. I, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, it's um, dude. Everyone is around you, like partying and this and that. So I mean, it's to be that guy that I mean, you just didn't even really talk about it. You were just. I do like to have some control though. Too uh, when I I, I can I can never smoke weed or anything or other things because if I don't feel in control, it's kind of. Like, yeah, you're just not feeling right. I felt like that a little bit too, because I, I felt like caretaker. Like if I'm out of control, then where are we all gonna yeah. end yeah. up? Yeah. How are we gonna get home? How are we gonna get home? That's yeah. dude. That's I mean, props, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's I don't think the parents realize how much it's affecting their kids too when they are that person that's drinking or it's it's a bad scenario and it's just and in most cases it, they don't break the chain like you did, you know. Most situations, I think they keep drinking and the, the next generation, you know what I mean? With, with that lifetime experience of getting to that point, like what do you think are the main things that people can work on to get their quick, you know, to come to that realization? Like what are the tools that come forward? Man, it, it, I think it's hard to come to do it yourself, come to the realization yourself. You have to have help because it's kind of like trying to, Build something. You don't have the right tools because mm-hmm. whatever got you there, you know, you, you, how are you going to have it? You don't have the foundation, so you need. That's why there's coaches and mentors and all these people that. Are, that and that's another thing about being. You know when people go to like you're talking rehab, you go. You know, you know when when you always hear how the rehab heads are like, the fuck do you know? You you don't understand how this feels. It's hard, like it. You don't, and so if someone hasn't done it and been through it, they're not going to listen to them. They, they don't got no trust authority. Them, yeah. They have no credibility. Yeah. You don't understand how it feels. It's because it's, it's not. But I, you know, so um, when you've been through it, it's 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 you know 
and you can relate and you can help someone through the same thing. That's yes. how I'm feeling that power. And right you now. were on the other side of it. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I coach, like, I do all this now every day, rewire people. Like, I, that's my thing. I want to be, like, I know God has his hand on Anthony Robbins, man. Like, the, the dude, nobody leaves those rooms without rewires, breakthroughs that save their lives and change and their lives. And how many people forever. are we talking? In a in a thing sometimes that he can affect thousands of thousands. people. There could be three to five thousand yeah. in the pe- in the room sometimes, yeah. and he, <laughs> not one yeah. person will leave that. that, that nobody's gonna leave, like nobody leaves until every person has had a breakthrough. Damn! By now the dude must be hugely rich, so it's like he's not doing he it for the do money. It. That's yeah. what I mean. He yeah. can't That's be doing it for the money. money. He's, he's doing yeah. it for the. He can, for some reason, I think he was on. I was watching something on him on YouTube last night, and it's like you can just tell when you look at him. Like, he's not doing it for the money, like. He just is excited to help you. So, that's, that's cool. Yeah. So totally much skill right there. And you feel yeah. that when you're watching them up there, huh? Yeah. It's hard to it's hard. Yeah, what about you? Are you like Well, when to... you have to go, you can't and, and and I paid I've paid for many people to I've You I, just I, send them. And, but when yeah, but you can't cuz I tried it. They, Even they ready, told me right? not to do it. I did it anyway with my family and if you don't pay for it yourself, you don't see the value in it. Ah. And you won't fully absorb the thing that you need to and then might skip a couple hours or the next day of the and it, the most important part yeah. where everything comes together and you rewired or whatever. Um, yeah, you need to put it, some skin in the game. You got to, yeah, but like you, yeah, and you have to invest. Yeah, because otherwise you're right. You're missing that last important thing. Be hundred percent committed to it. I mean, and are you yourself. are you um, feeling like the knowledge that you got from those experiences that you feel that you're sharing it with others and is that what you're doing? Yeah. That's what I want to do. I, I mean, I didn't know at the time, but what Kelly Flynn did for me, it's just, you can't even, and what, 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 you know, Anthony Robbins does, like people think they, they th- you know, you, you can't put it, you can't see it on, on film is powerful, obviously, that's why you go to concerts and stuff like that, right? But, yeah. Um, you know, they, so I hear people, they're like, they think he's like, is he like a motivational speaker? Or whatever. Yeah. It's like, no, man. <laughs> But, but, you know, not like, and then it's like society, you know, I'd rather buy rims or a new car or something like that. And and people think you're crazy when you put thousands of dollars into yourself. Yeah. Rather than buy rims. It's like, ah, it's cool, dude. (laughs) And they do that, you know, and I, I didn't understand because there's some, there's a few times where I, 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 I almost didn't go because I'm by, you know, you're by yourself and I almost. And I'm, and I'm thinking. By the way, I, I, the, one of them I saw Chanel Sladix. Oh yeah, and she's like, Marco, <laughs> really? She's just there. Yeah, Nobody knows that I do yeah. these things, right? Like, and she, I was like, crazy. Hey! And she's like, What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I always roll up in these things because I had been. So, um, you can't. You have to be there, and you have to do it yourself. Like so, um, but you know, you're going by yourself because you can't. They kind of want you around. So you're not sidetracked by people yeah. that you know and love, and they could have the same issues. And like, if I go with my mom, you want to be away. You even have to sit away from. Well, they have you sit away you know. from the people that you know. If you bring, if you if you're with somebody, but um, uh, so I almost didn't go, and then every single time I almost didn't go, but I went in. I was like, nah, man, you know, because you're like, ah, oh, I got work to do, I got business, so I got, and you're always trying to talk yourself out of it. Plus, you know. But, and then and then I go and I come out of there like so changed and I'm like I can't believe I almost didn't go every time because it was that just, valuable. Not after. even just the Anthony Robbins stuff, but like all the other oh. everything that you could put in, invest in yourself. You know. Wow. Dude, how often awesome. does he do do these things? Just all the time. All the time, but man, I'm telling you, I, I, I he's not gonna do it forever. Yeah. Right. Is there anyone else that compares to him out so there, there in your experience? So I would just suggest everybody, you know, unleash the power within is like in the first taste where you start to, you, know, you might have some breakthroughs and then, but then you can go deeper and deeper and, um, you know, he, he's, help, you know, like there's other people with skills that are, but man, not like him. Like, I would hurry. Damn, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. And how are, where do people, how do you reach people? Like, are you doing... Your him? own no for you like how are you paying that forward and reaching other people to help other people yeah i just i just i mean eh. well like you have your you, you mean for him or just no, in general for, for you yourself paying that oh. forward to try and get people to recognize 
that um, those experiences yeah, okay. are worthy? Like, how are you reaching out? Every way, I mean, in every way possible, but, um, you know, from the, the business stuff that I've done, like, I, I, I really wanted to, because I wasn't, I wasn't skilled. I don't have that skill. So I wanted to learn that skill. Like what, the, business skill? No. Or that skill that Tony Running has? Running a company? Rewiring. Oh, oh rewiring. Because gotcha. there's... The rewiring's huge. Everybody's different, right? And yeah. But, the, man, you, you can, you, you, I mean, you're, I was, you're crying the whole time pretty much because you're watching him unravel the layers of these thoughts that people have that are not, they're just hallucinations and they've been like just in a pattern their whole, their whole, you know, from when they were a baby. So it takes mind mapping skill, techno mind technology, NLP, it's like everything mixed together, psychology, you know, all this stuff that um, he's sitting there working on things. So does he bring like one person up and, he talks yeah, to them and everyone hears about Yeah, that's my question. Like, is it? he leading you through a thought process and everybody's on their own uh, process of... Different. How See, it, uh, it's like... It's, it's different. You gotta be there. Yeah. 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 You should have been there. Yeah. We should have... I never put be. my head around what's going on yeah. out there with these things. And that's just one example, right? <laughs> There's other people and other things that you can do, but I just like... I like... like I, 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 I love... So I got skilled. Like, I, I studied, you know, certifications, all kinds of crazy stuff. Keep going to the things. I'm a graduate of that stuff, too. And uh, but just in the moment, in the joy or whatever, some some people, you know, are in a situation like certain mindset, and a lot of it's parallel laws of success that I didn't know what I did when I did it in snowboarding, but uh. I do, and it, it's all parallel laws. There's, there's there's everybody from different walks of life, but to be able to get in there and talk with them and help them through some stuff is it's crazy. What you guys cool. do as pro snowboarders that can actually help you so much later in life that it sets you up to this to be like this person that's just ready to go and, and conquer so much yeah. shit. And it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize that when you're out there building that jump or getting up earlier than yeah. the next person, you know, cause you want it so bad. It's snowboarding and, it's and you passion, can apply right? that. Yeah. You apply that to the other things in your life and it can be the success. And it's really interesting to look at that, I guess. And, uh, it sucks for when a pro snowboarder, doesn't realize what they've learned out there and, and they don't really take advantage of that in their next second stage. And I guess hopefully people will open their eyes so we don't have people that are, are kind of out there. And I don't know, I've seen people that are just almost kind of bitter afterwards because they don't hit a that. A lot. Yeah, they yeah. don't hit that like, in their mind, they're never going to hit what they hit as a pro snowboarder mm -hmm. almost. I and think it, too how do you some, get there? Yeah, I think too some people feel like they didn't get enough from snowboarding. Yes, and so they, like they their career has ended and they didn't get enough or they didn't do make their mark they wanted to and it's a it's a big deal to have a when you're an athlete to have a to have your sponsors start dropping you or your performing isn't quite there you know like you can't be at the peak in your athletic career forever mm -mm. like it is a chapter that happens and there was a movie uh, that Michael Phelps, a swimmer, mm. he wrote a movie called The Weight of Gold. Mm, heard about and that. And it's pretty heavy, like the especially the Olympic athletes that, you know, from when they were young, they were training. It was just all for this goal. And the goal happens to be like 30 seconds at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it's over. Where do you go? And, and then what? Who are you? Happens? Like what happens when... So it's a it's a heavy thing. Like I think um, snowboarding brings so much joy, whether you're doing it for money as a profession to make your living, or just for joy on the weekends with your kids or whatever it is. Like I think snowboarding ha can bring so much to you past your career, and so I hope that those people that felt like they didn't get enough can fill that part of them selves by just continuing to snowboard like it's yeah, a, keep it's, it in the life keep, keep that community it, yeah. in your life right like yeah. there's so much positive to it and it doesn't owe you anything you know yeah. it's already given you so it's, much it's there for us to take what we can get from it yeah i mean geez just that feeling of doing some sick trick i mean that's like the best feeling in the world and that could be just a sick powder turn for the the weekend warrior yeah. whatever it is like snowboarding gives you so much just in that in the community that it I mean, look at the friendships we've all been able to have. Yeah. I mean, you can roll into some random town in some country you've never been to, and all of a sudden you got crew in that town because of snowboarding, and 
it's a special thing and it doesn't owe anybody anything but it has so much to give everybody and it's it's a beautiful thing and it's good to see someone like you making the most of it afterwards both of you guys i mean amazing careers and you don't you, you leave and and now you have things to uh i don't know offer the world like it seems like you're heading in a crazy direction marco uh, you can yeah, be the next yeah. uh, Anthony, <laughs> Tony, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I have a question about that because it makes me think of like our life experiences build to the knowledge? Because I don't think you can go into what you know now to be Marco. How could a twenty-one-year-old Marco have known that yeah. without all that experience that happened in between? And so. Can you talk about that of like, it's, it's not like you can go run to the 21 year old and say like, this is what you need to know because they have to live it to learn it, Uh you know? So how do you like relate with the stuff that, you know, like to teach your children or give them tools? Like, what do you focus on with that? That's, that's, that is kind of what I focus on actually is, um, learn, learning how to, relay that in ways that people can understand because they're yeah. not gonna I did I, you know 20 if 21 or 24 I wasn't I didn't really understand shit I, but I you thought you knew put, everything yeah and I, <laughs> totally. yeah, man, <laughs> I, I wasn't I wouldn't even be able to put it together but when you're able to put it together for people in their language in the way that they can understand that's a skill right coaching and yeah different things like that so yeah so I didn't I didn't know what I did when I did it but now I do and I'm able to structure that out and and you know, lay it out for people. Like if, if they, you know, if it's in their language, if they're a snowboarder, but if, you know, whether it's a fisherman or a lawyer, whatever, whatever. like in their language, in the way that they would understand, because everybody's at different levels and, but they all have their own different issues and things that are stopping them from the next, from the next level. Right. Is there something about it where, you know, I hear people say like, you're on the hamster wheel, like you're just spinning to pay the bills and mm. how do you break out of that? Mm. Like, I feel like there's so many people now just just fighting to survive and it's a crazy world we're up against to just survive. So it's hard to fit in the joy. So it's really like trying to combine those things so that you feel joy every day and that you work with pride and yeah. and love and providing for your family and stuff like it's a well that's let's see that's de- i mean i don't want to turn this into a like a personal development thing but like i think people want to know some answers yeah. though people are struggling out there right now it's you know well if i can put it in like snowboarding terms like okay it might have been you when when did we go to montreal was that you um i just, I just remember a crew of us going into into a, a city Buildings. I was just looking at those buildings like because I was kind of now we're getting paid for snowboarding and I was just looking at that building like how could they sit in there like that? I, mm. I mean we're out here fucking around like doing, how could you just sit in there like that? I know they don't like that. Like I'll die before I do that. Mm. But we're so programmed. How long since day one? Go. You gotta go to school. Get a safe, secure job. Gotta go to school. Get a safe, secure job. Gotta go to school. And like and and they told me that. And my my parents, they went to school, got a job. There, we were broke. We were poor. And and I should, my mom hates when I do this, cause, but we got evicted and all that stuff. You know, she hates when I say that stuff. But it's just real. And you said it, survival mode. So th- this is how people think. Like you know, if you see it like a person on the street, well, they're just thinking survival mode. Like they're thinking me, me. How do I get? How do I eat? Survive today? Today? They're thinking day to day. And then month to month is like, how do I pay my bills this month? Month to month living, right? So they, there's it's still kind of a me 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 thing because we're like, so we can't help anybody else. We can't even help ourselves. How are we gonna help other people? Like they say, one drowning person is useless to another drowning mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. So I know I know exactly what that is. I was there. I was. I, that was the farthest thing ever that I would think that I could even ever help anybody. And then, but then, you know, they say kind of there's a book. It's called that. Uh, Little book. It's really cool, though. It's called, uh, and I, I summarized it in a blog, but um, it's called uh, The Ten Distinctions Between Millionaires and Middle Class. And mm. so, you know, middle class think like, uh, don't, I don't, I don't want people to think I'm like, there's no, there's no judgment on it. It's just the way it is. Like, month to month is like, 
it's still kind of a me, me, me thing. And then, but like the people with, they say rich and then wealthy, right? So the rich think like year to year, but they're, they're actually thinking about other people. Like if there's a problem, okay, let me solve it. I'm going to set a one year kind of, they think like not day to day or month to month, but year to year. So they set a goal, a deadline. And then they'll think, who can I serve? Where's the problem? I'm going to give it, uh, give it, I'm going to find the solution. So to help people. So it's like, if people are hungry, okay, taco shop. If, if someone's has flat tires, it's a problem. Okay. I'm going to fix a tire shop and they have a goal. But then the wealthy, cause I, you know, they, they, they're thinking like 10 years out. So they're like, where are the most people where are the biggest problems? And the more people you help get what they want, the more, you know, the more obviously the more money you make, but they have 10 years. So they're thinking like, where are all the people? What's going to be the biggest problem? They have 10 years to get a skill that gives them, you know, cause the golden rule is either 10,000 hours or 10 years of practice and training to have specialized skills. So they think wealthy people are just lucky. There's no luck in winning things we, we have to prepare and practice and stuff mm-hmm. for the contest we have been preparing preparing so luck is preparation met opportunity we're just we we're prepared when the opportunity came right so you have 10 years to get good at something that you want to get good at where there's going to be the biggest problems you solve it and, and in a lot of cases like things like you hear like baby boomers and right now there's like 10,000 baby boomers per day turning 65 years old there's they have problems if you solve that problem so i, I had to read the book uh a lot of people thought I was crazy, but I had called it um, just because I read a book. It was called The Wellness Revolution, where people were getting older, so they're thinking about aging and supplements and wellness. It's called The Wellness Revolution. They said it's going to be a big shift in wealth, trillions of dollars going into wellness. And I, So I was like, wellness? And I, went, I started studying that stuff, and I found out about Big Pharma. Yeah. I was starting to get pissed, like, man. Big Pharma wants us to be sick and blah, blah, blah. And everybody thought it was crazy. But man, that was like, that, that was the first jump off for me. It was like seeing bigger picture kind of stuff. And it's crazy, dude. That Big Pharma stuff is nuts. So what, you started focusing and researching in wellness? And you're right, because that's what I need. Big time. I, I went down the now. rabbit hole. I've been down <laughs> yeah. that rabbit hole. When I, when I started talking shit, it was like one out of four. It used to be like back in the 20s, it was one out of 800 people getting cancer or whatever developing cancer and then it was like one out of 20 then you know then then it, then 15 20 years ago it was one out of four now it's like one out of two one out of three people dude that's crazy that number is nuts and I, you can look at it as in when i was young i don't know anybody who had cancer you know what i mean when i was in school like let's say i don't know when i was in middle school or something yeah. with Never our even, boarding for yeah. breast cancer stuff like 24 years now 25 years yeah. and it was grandmothers who were getting it and then all of a sudden our friend passed away from it and then Mm -hmm. it was like woke everybody up like we got to do something about this to make it um the awareness there the awareness i know five people i think that have died from cancer and that's easy easy yeah yeah. that's just like quick you know like close to me really close to me and that's messed up yeah so what's the solution we don't even know well there's so much there's so much that the system is feeding us that's probably not the best thing for us so yeah hmm. i went i went all the way down that rabbit hole for you know yeah years yeah. but was that was that original question though uh yeah. who asked it you i think you um sherry wine mm-hmm. i don't know how yeah. to it doesn't do it probably delete um, everything you asked i was trying to get at um like is there because it took a lifetime to get to this awareness almost, like how to get there sooner so that you're living your life with a better perspective or rewired or however you... Mm. I was really also like, how do people find you? Like, are you doing blogs and doing podcasts or doing your own uh, social media? Like, are you doing that in a regular way to get yeah. the message out there that people can have access to this knowledge that can help you push kind forward? Of. I mean, um, I, I actually, you know, in a, promote in another, like a whole, not, all the personal development world or wellness world or whatever, so it's not that, that much snowboarding, but um, just my name, markfragmentoya.com is my site and blog. And then, but there's different, like a private Facebook groups and internet marketing, all that kind of stuff. I think I was, I remember being completely tripped out when I saw you with like a microphone thing, dressed nice, <laughs> like oh, talking yeah. in front of a crowd. I'm like, 
wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a fo- I saw a photo of you with like I think I told a my mom, other people maybe in yeah, front of you. Like, I told my crazy. mom that Marco is giving uh, – inspirational speaking or doing something That's like what, that and she was like thinking that yeah marco what what and i was like yeah he really yeah. had a shift in his life of of a new perspective or the rewiring or whatever that was where he see things differently and he's can stand up there in a crowd and share his story and it touches other people it's a big it's a huge uh bravery and strength to be able to do that you know what that that was it's my worst it was my worst fear yeah wow public speaking i'm I'm, like i learned from snowboarding to uh you know camera i'm cool yeah whatever that is my most i think a lot of i'm i've heard you know like a lot of people or most people's is the worst fear ever and i I, apparently it's they're, they're asking me i just got done speaking to a bunch of freaking financial firms and stuff with Marshall Falk, the MFL player and, and he, but he was saying the same thing. He's like, and this is all mindset stuff. It's all rewires because some people will take things and, and they'll put a meaning on it in a disempowering way. Some will do it in a, do, you know, think of it if they're trained, if they have a trained mind, they'll, they'll think of it as the other way, which is empowering. So, but he, he's saying the same thing. Like, uh, cause even snowboarding might, you know, when I was skateboarding, and I was just, I found, I found what I wanted. I found my passion and that's all I wanted to do. I wasn't going to go to college because didn't, we didn't have any money. So the only way I was going to go to college was soccer scholarships. So I was playing soccer, but then once I found that skateboard, that was it. Like I, I quit, I got hurt, pulled my groin, and I never went back to soccer. So everybody's like, mm. <laughs> and I just kept skating. So I graduated high school, no, no uh, scholarship. scholarship. And then, so I just kept skating. Pretty soon, my the my girlfriend at the time was like, you, "You're not you're not doing shit with your life." Like, we broke up. Mm, I remember her. My my, I don't know if that was that was before. Was, <laughs> that was but, before but, us. Um, but my dad, but then my dad called. He's like, "What the fuck are you gonna do with that stupid ass skateboard? You need to go to school and get a job." Damn. And I I, I kind of almost gave up on my dreams. I, I he came, I felt so guilty. He came up with eight hundred bucks. I knew he was broke. He, Cause he lived in Florida, and I knew I saw, and uh, and I get I was like so guilty. So then I I was like, man, I, I came up with enough money to get two classes at. at uh, <laughs> this is how I met you guys, um, at at Metro downtown Denver. Luckily, that only lasted a couple months because uh, Kelly Flynn knew these other Seven Day Adventist Christians who I had met them now, and they were being all nice, and and they're like. We're, they were going to go to college, but but they were going to skip a year and go later. Like, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go be ski it. bums in Vail, Where and we, we have a little apartment in Avon. Uh-huh. And Remember, Wendy? Yeah, the, these, that's what I thought was your girlfriend. Yeah, oh, it was. Yeah. Uh, but so, um, well, after... Whenever, anyway. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I remember you're coming up with, like, Jill. You yeah, the whole, the whole crew. There's yeah. five of us in this little, yeah. you know. They just let. They were so cool. They, they like they let me, and I end up becoming I this you... professional <laughs> freaking snowboarder, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just wondered how you linked up with them. All of a sudden, you showed up and you're with those random, very random things. They, That's yeah. Cool. And um, so they were just having a year off, and they were just let you come come chill with them. What was my That's point it. though to that? Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I and forgot. What was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell? I was going to say something about. Um, do you want to figure this out? You're no, going to oh, move well, on. No, wait. Damn it! Shh, There's lessons good. in the story, though. Um, <laughs> There's lessons. Uh, oh, oh, how? Okay, Marshall Falk. This is why. Yes. We ta- this is why we talk about this because. So he's like, and so, but so I can get this from my dad. I'm getting it from the girl, like. My my grandma, who I loved to death, I loved her so much. She's like so sweet. I, I, the way she made me feel, I love you. She kissed me, <laughs> but the first thing out of her mouth, for grandma, for grandma, first thing out of her mouth, when are you gonna stop hurting yourself? Huh. Every day, every time I saw her, first thing, when are you gonna start, you stop hurting yourself yet? When are you gonna start hurting yourself? And every people just say stuff, and some people be like, uh, and they listen, and then some people are like, no. I'm going to, you know, keep doing my thing. 
and Marshall Falk was up there, and he's like, "Yeah, man, they can." And I felt that when he he goes he goes, uh, "Every family, you know, when I talk to my family, that you know, because you get hit hard in NFL, hard over and over, get hit hard." And so they would always ask him, "Why you let him hit you so hard?" Like, why you let him hit you? And it's like, I'm not trying to let him hit me. <laughs> this is what I, you know, like, yeah. right? And they just will say stuff. There's whole big books written on this, like Think and Grow Rich. There's a whole chapter of, like, the, your worst enemy for success and all that stuff is your closest friends and family because every time you have an idea, they're going to, that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to buy that. And they'll, they'll just, you know, they don't know they're doing it. They think they're helping you. My dad thought he was helping me. Yeah. It right. might have pushed. The quickest to you just proved kick them you. wrong. So that was the you that's the programming that you were talking about. We're programmed yeah. for this stuff, it's deep programming, and and it's actually about unprogramming those little circuits that connect, and then they're there for life. You can actually disconnect them and once that's disconnect and go into another. Yeah, because well, it's an you, empty hard drive when we're yeah. when we're born, right? It's, well, you dude. proved you proved them wrong. You did make something of skateboarding, and it led you to snowboarding. And I hope they're proud of you now. Yeah, it's such a common thing, though. Like, I want to go build websites. You don't know how to do that. You didn't go to school. Yeah. You can't do that. And it's yeah. like, oh, I want to be. I want to go skateboard. You're not good at skateboarding. Like, watching, yeah, watching yeah. you learn yeah. photography. Like, oh, sick! I, I just watched that whole thing. Yeah, because you know? people be like, you didn't go to school for that. Kevin Zacker, <laughs> shout yeah. out, like, man, yeah. that dude. Zacher. Everybody. We had Everybody such a good Nate crew back then. Nate. Yep. Lotto, like, oh, man. Uh, Nate, um, I was able to talk with Nate a bunch because uh, he was helping me with E-Tree's photos and all that. So he's going to come in the studio and do something with photos. But it's so rad that yeah. these guys. And Blotto, dude, he's like, he's just a maniac, dude. I don't, it's awesome. A couple of these, yeah. dude. That guy just doesn't stop, dude. Wow. He's like a machine. I think he might be a robot, like the Terminator. You ever notice he hasn't aged? He like looks the same. From <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think I've him seen him in a long just, time. He just is, looks the same, dude. I don't know something it's going that on. That energy, yeah. man. It's that Best Keanu Reeves thing, ever. dude. He could be a vampire. I don't know. Blotto. Terminator. Blotto. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. It's you can't let people hold you back. I guess, huh? Got to get out there. Yeah. Think, think for yourself. Yeah. If, it, if it's if it's in your deep in your gut, man, don't. You don't let people stop you, right? Live yeah. to other people's expectations. You yeah. know, there's, they're, they're never gonna be happy, right? Like the, you're never gonna please their. Like I was, I used to be a people pleaser. I got that from certain issues too back, you know. But you can't please everybody. Trying, trying that, you'll be unhappy, right? Like, and there's no matter what you do, there's somebody gonna talk shit. It's like, it's crazy, dude. Even with doing podcasts, like, there's these people every. Every time, no matter what you do, there's like, most people be like, sick, that was dope, that was dope. There's this one guy that was like, at second 453, there is a blank spot. And uh, <laughs> they're just calling, you know, they're like, oh, you're yeah, always yeah. getting called out on something. It's just like. Super control. <laughs> they think it's a like, skill. <laughs> yeah. they, think they, they actually think that's a skill, like, right? Like, dude, it, I can a, find the bad in anything. Yeah, that's Ooh, the thing. You got I can, a skill. Or yeah. I can, I have so many ideas. And it's like, dude, it's the person that actually implements and succeeds with the idea and takes it across the finish line. You, we can all sit and talk shit about rad ideas to come up with. It's like, you got to be a doer. You got to like... Take action. Yeah, take action. It's the action that's important, not to like... Yeah. I have so many ideas. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's interesting shit. It's, just, it's like the way people are, I guess. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, guys. Man, we should call it for today, eh? Okay. Sure. I feel like... Because I still have homework to do, yep. and I'm hungry. I'm starving. And... Let's go, uh, eat. Huh? Let's go, Let's go eat. eat. Dude. You, you do guys, your homework, we'll go You guys eat. have crushed it today in here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 24 hours later. Boom! I'm ready. Huge episode here today. I got in the studio, <laughs> MFM. Wow, dude. Can't ah! believe it, though. This has, been, <laughs> this has been a long time coming, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. And wait, some people might, even, might not even know MFM. They're like, what is this code? Is this, what do we do? Mark <laughs> Frank Montoya in the booth today. I'm stoked. Dude, so stoked. This has been... I'm uh, stoked to see you, man. Yeah, dude. Please. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so good, my dogs. You know what I mean? And that goes out to each and every one of you. 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 One of you.